take it himself, Pam Pike, and he scores! Oh, yeah. The clock shows three seconds, two, one, zero. LSU has beaten the number one ranked Florida Gators. LSU We can do anything we want as a team. And, uh, uh sorry, man. <laughs> great one. Uh, the greatest. Oh, 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 you think we got real? Yeah. Yeah. In the 104-year history of college football in Louisiana, arguably no bigger win deserved of the wall in the LSU locker room than last week's against Florida. And the sellout crowd on hand at Tiger Stadium today is evidence that today, Mardi Gras in October rolls on for a team that figures to be in the national hunt. In our Bell South FCC Game of the Week, Jefferson Pilot Sports brings you the eighth-ranked Tigers of LSU against their rival, the Ole Miss Rebels. Hello, everyone. I am Tim Brando welcoming you to our coverage, and it has been Mardi Gras in October, and they're hoping for Lanyap, and that, of course, means gravy. Bigger wins the rest of the way. But what about the hangover? There is some history where big wins are concerned for LSU, following them up with upset losses to teams that they were favored against. But Jerry DiNardo told me yesterday that he told the fans and his team in order to make special things happen off that Florida win, they've got to move on. And move on they have. He told the fans today, get here at 3 a.m. in the morning. Make your biological clock work as it did a week ago. Our Dave Rowe was out amongst the hysteria just a few moments ago. Timmy, well, tailgating is an incredible tradition here at LSU. They have recovered from Florida last week, but Florida's history, what you all got to know is, can you get up for Ole Miss today? Can you get up for Ole Miss? Timmy, I'm going to have myself a little Andouille gumbo. It's chicken, it's sausage, and it looks great. <laughs> a little sauce piquant to go along with the lanyard from Dave Rowe. Believe me, he may not make it up here to the booth for the start of this game. The fans are at a fever pitch yet again because the Ole Miss Rebels are a team that is coming in here very confident. You have to remember, at 3-2 and two and a quality performance at Tennessee, this is a Rebels team that under Tommy Tuberville believes, believes that it can beat this LSU team. The timing is on their side. The game, after all, has been played after LSU's biggest win in history, and it's not being played under the moonlight, but under the sunlight. Here come the Rebels of Mississippi. Tommy Tuberville, 42 years young and very confident. This is the third time that they have played a top 10 team in four weeks. And now, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Game of the Week is brought to you by Bell South. Bell South is proud to be the official telecommunications partner of the SEC. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dream. By Mazda, experienced cars and trucks built with a passion for the road. Mazda. By Morgan Keegan, the South's premier investment firm. And by Sonic, where we invite you to drive in for a change. Tiger Stadium as the Tigers hosting the Ole Miss Rebels. Bob Kessin along with Ole Miss coach Tommy Tuberville. This is a great opportunity for your football team. And well, it would be if you're the home team. I tell you, this crowd's really going to be into it. We've got to take them out early, Bob. We've, something's good got to happen to us for us to stay in this ball game early. You've had some time to get ready for the game, though, haven't you? We're 100% we're in, in shape and ready to go. And uh, 
We're looking forward to hitting somebody instead of ourselves. We've been practicing against ourselves for two weeks. We're looking forward to the game. Coach, thanks for the time. Thank you. Tommy Tuberville talking with Bob Kessling and uh, Bob's bullets, very important to this ball game. And let's get those from you right now. Tim, you look at the bullets, I think one of the key things is the rushing aspect. LSU number one in rushing. Ole Miss is 11th in rushing defense. Field position, Chad Kessler as the leading punter in the SEC, and that'll be a problem for Ole Miss. And, of course, sacks, LSU gets after him. Ole Miss hasn't been able to get much pressure on the quarterback all season. You heard Tommy Tuberville moments ago talking about something good happening early. They won the toss and deferred, so he's hoping his defense could perhaps make a big play. Falk is back deep, takes the kick a couple of yards in the end zone. Kevin Falk bounces off a couple of tackles and is up to the 25-yard line for LSU. Herb Tyler, last week against Florida, 10 out of 17, easily his best game. He ran the option particularly well. Oh, yeah, the two rushing touchdowns, those were incredible. They just couldn't stop. They never forced the quarterback to toss, and Tyler took it in. Ball marked right at the 20-yard line. The Tigers take over. Abram Booty getting his first start. Comes wide to the bottom of the screen. First one from Evangeline Shreveport. Four. Now gets up to the 25. Black Kreitz. Makes the stop as you look at that uh, Nations Bank starting lineup. And Booty, as we mentioned, getting his first yeah, start. true freshman making that first start. Falk and Tyler great at the running backs. Foster and Hankton wide receivers. The big line, Tiger offensive line, led by Fanica. He's having a fantastic season. Langley, McClure, Curry, and Jackson. Solid front line of offensive linemen. 1975 Notre Dame grad, Jerry DiNardo. Now in his third season at LSU, looking for his 23rd win with the Tigers. And the flag comes down. Yeah, they saw, I believe they saw Adam Perry move. Saw him flinch. Did you notice how everybody kind of pointed at him? Our referee today is Matt Gentry. Umpire is Roy Waters. Bert Ackerman is the linesman. The line judge, James Dean Sr. Don Shanks. Bobby I.A. Jr. is the side judge. And Stan Murray is the back judge today. So that backs the Tigers up. Second and ten. Double tight end look. DiMaggio, that's right, Joe DiMaggio, a freshman from Crowley, Louisiana, the second tight end in the game. Tyler in trouble. Lost the fumble. That's going to be a fumble. Oh, I thought that's a fumble. They are, they are ruling that an incompleted forward pass, but I don't know. I think that's debatable. Timmy, I thought his arm as he was going back to pass the arm has to come forward to be considered a pass. Now watch the arm. When he puts his arm back, watch if the ball doesn't come out here. Now watch right here. Oh, oh. This, I believe that's a fumble. That's got to be a fumble. What a break for the Tigers. Yeah, you see the ball comes off his arm, never comes forward. That one was missed. That was the big play Tuberville was looking for early. Wow, that would have been a huge play. Third down and ten. Three wide receivers set for the Tigers. Bad, bad snap. LSU comes out in a front in its opening series. Michael Boone, the tackle, will come up with Herb Tyler, but a problem off the snap from Todd McClure and his worst nightmare is come to fruition. I was just thinking that all the LSU fans are standing, and it's like they all started gasping because things go wrong after great victories here. We've talked about it. It's incredible that they would get such a poor start. Yeah, and a big break. It could have been worse. Chad Kessler leading the country in punting. His longest 66. Amazing to think he would average over 50 yards per punt. This is a low-line driver. And Andre Roan will let it bounce. And it takes an Ole Miss bounce. And it'll be quality field position for the Rebels. Oh, it's incredible field position. They're going to have the ball at about the 46, 47-yard line. That's great position. That's a 35-yard punt for Kessler, who's been leading the country. And now Stuart Patrick, young man, 64% efficient as a passer, has not had as many big plays as he'd like. They'd like to see that uh, touchdown to interception ratio improve. But really playing at the top of his game, playing it with great, just within control of what he can do. He plays very solid, makes good decisions. Grant Bird is one wide out. He's very tall, and they're going to stick Avery today as a wide out from time to time. He's the fast back, and Avery this time will get the handoff. The quick feed of 
John Avery. Just a yard shy of the first down. Mark Roman, the free safety, comes up with him, and Roman will be the spy today on Avery. Well, Avery just finds a little seam and slips through. You can see those linemen coming off. Good block there by Matt Luke, number 50, driving off the center. And you see Avery just reached that block. He picks up about nine yards on that run. Oh, actually, he almost picked up 10. Oh, now they're marking it. Excuse me now. Again, good drive off the line. Just tremendous drive off the line. And great feet by Avery. Second down and one. Out of an odd formation. Anding is the up back. And look at that spin move by Avery. And he catches the corner. Cummings comes up to usher him out. And let's take a look at that offense. Avery with all of that speed and the quick feet. And today he'll be playing both wide out as well as running back. Well, they want to get him in that one-on-one -on -one situation. They've got good, solid people back there, especially Rufus French, the tight end. He can catch anything that's thrown his way. Good line led by Matt Luke, the junior up front. They're going to need to play well. Wade Kitchen, Metcalf, and Coburn, they've got to have a big day for Ole Miss to be in this football game. Patrick, a senior from Morgan City. goal line down at the two and tim i saw a late flag on the play way way after the play it was out of bounds they threw it on about the three yard line robert reed the recipient on that quick slant that's the big play that tuberville was looking for that's a 33 yard pickup and the rebels pending this uh, penalty are in great shape and you can see tuberville very yeah. upset well i think it's good oh it's the hand in the back all the way at the tail end of the play oh boy that's a killer. And that, that flag came down at about the two-yard line. We're not talking about way upfield. Well, how many times do you see a block in the back and it's no. needless, totally needless? Now, that's not the block in the back. There's the underneath. Now, watch. Just get outside. We may be able to see where this play happened, the, the hand in the back. Rufus French, watch him right yeah. there. Yeah, I believe that's Ole who it was. Yep. The tight end who's uh, so highly thought of, sophomore yeah. from... Emory, Mississippi, and it was needless. They didn't need it at all. It was against Clarence LeBlanc. So that backs them up from the point of the foul to the 14-yard line. Avery again. The speed off the corner. Touchdown! over after the biggest win in school history. I don't think you can engineer a drive any better than Ole Miss has just done. Using the speed of Avery to the outside, good dance back inside. Got some good blocks down there. I'm telling you right now, this is a stunned LSU crowd. Steve Lindsay's extra point is good. Tuberville said to Bob Gessling in our open, he needed something good to happen early. Well, thanks to John Avery. Coach, you got your wish. Seven to nothing, Ole Miss with the lead. And a week after that number one win, Jerry DiNardo says it's time for it, for them to forget it, get on with it. And were those comments prophetic? Another stage of our program is can we take the rearview mirror off every week and look forward, whether it's a big win or a tough loss, whether it's an ugly win or an ugly loss, it really doesn't matter. In the athletic world, nothing's permanent, and you better move on. The history that he could call upon, the Tiger roller coaster. Oh after that Halloween run for Billy Cannon, they lost to Tennessee. They beat Auburn, that was a top-ranked team, then lost to Ole Miss in a year that they beat Alabama. The last time they beat Alabama at home was in 69. Then in 82, Jerry Stovall was coaching. They beat a quality Bobby Bowden-led Florida State team only to lose to Tulane, of all people, without going coach Vince Gibson. And they lost that game right here in Tiger Stadium. Timmy, there was one in the 50s, one in the 60s, one in the 70s, one in the 80s, and, oh boy, all these fans right now are just gasping. Is this the one in the 90s? In the 70s, they had the one-second blues for Ole Miss. And there you see Tommy Tuberville's defense, Brock Kreitz leading his club in tackles. Yeah, Kreitz really is. He's the leader up there. Wayne's got to play well, as does Walker. The up-front men have got to be able to stop the run today. The secondary is a good one, led by Malika Griffin. He's got two He's got two interceptions, 24 tackles. Hurt, Thigpen, they've got to play well. Strickland's got to play well today. Another marker coming down. 
Matt Gentry's been a very busy guy here early in this game. Boy, and it's going to go against uh, LSU again. Lee, first down. Lineup problems through the course of the early portion of this game besetting Jerry Donato's team. Tommy Tuberville could not feel better about oh. his situation. Oh, he's, he's glowing today, and I can promise you, if you're standing next to Jerry DiNardo, you can feel the heat coming off of him because he is flat out warm right now. Tyler sends it out the floor. Ron Pike's the first to get there. Timothy Strickland, the free safety, also coming up to bang Kevin Falk, who's playing with a bit of a shoulder problem. And remember, with Cecil the Diesel Collins gone, it's important that Falk stay healthy, number one, and that Rondell Mealy get his opportunities because you know he's an outstanding yeah. back as well. Well, they all they all need carries, and that's what they do so well. You just keep on going to them. When you flip that little ball, the ball to Falk out of the backfield, that's like an extended handoff on the run. You just get him out here one-on-one. -on -one. Ole Miss has got to flow quickly through the football. Second down, 14. Just a few yards shy of a first down, and running from tackle to tackle has not been a problem. Armiga Spearman makes the stop, the sophomore out of Bruce, Mississippi, number four. Well, good blocking up front. McClure, the center, gets a good block, as does Fanica. Oh, just really up. opens it up and splits them. You see them, they're still driving them five, six yards off the ball. They just need to keep on driving off that football. Just play, just smash mouth football. That's the way that they need to control Ole Miss. Remember those numbers impacted by Collins, who was getting so much attention early from LSU offensively. But the production has always been there for fall. Exactly. You fake the ball down the line right here. Now, when the quarterback doesn't toss right there, you've got to get him. That's Strickland. He has got to come up with that tackle. Now, when you come out there, you've got to call. You've got to copy the call, the toss. And you see right there, Hurd is the second one who misses him. Now he's into the secondary. You've got to stop. You've got to make the quarterback pitch the football. If you don't, there's the results of when he doesn't have to pitch the football. LSU ran the option four times last week against Florida. It worked three times, once for a touchdown, and in every place it was a critical play. First and ten for the Rebels. Alisma Alexander gets hammered. Chuck Riley along with Joe Wesley, the first in the contact. Defense. Booger McFarland, that's the nickname, the given Anthony, and he will give Matt Luke all he wants yeah. today. And Nixon, Wiley, and Miller have got to get continue that sack attack. The secondary, LeBlanc Donaldson, six interceptions. He leads the he leads the nation. Well, he's got to play well as does Cummings. I think that's going to be holding. 
I saw one of the LSU players trying to get their foot out of a, look like, what looked like a hold. Well, Mike Gentry, we're having some problems with his microphone from time to time. It's uh, working occasionally and not working at others, but... You know, Bob Kessling's always working, right, Bob? That's right. Let's talk about John Avery a little bit. Of course, he was hurt early in the season with a dislocated elbow. In fact, he took himself out of the game against Central Florida. Now, you see, he still has a wrap on the elbow. There's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly healthy, but he got used to wearing a brace on it, so he just kept that wrap on there, perhaps for a little protection. But Avery is healthy. As you can see, he's really running well today. Second down to 19, and in the student section, close to the goal line, it will be very loud. Mississippi has given name Delimus got to wear the number two in high school. Now he's double deuce running behind John Avery. Boy, he gets good speed to the outside. He really beats the backer right here. And that's Charles Smith. He beats to the corner and gets up front. The bandits making their way back. Of course, the Chinese bandits are part of Paul Dietzel's uh, historic run for the national title in 58. Now these are simply the bandits, not the Chinese bandits. Gatlin, Matthew, Sykes, Mitchell, Sutton, and Williams. We should mention that there are only one set of Chinese bandits. These are simply the bandits playing for the Tigers of Jerry DiNardo. But a quality move by Carl Reese and a defense that was put in to just deal with the fatigue factor against Florida a week ago. Absolutely. They do a lot of spelling of players, bring a lot of people in. And when you hear the crowd, Timmy, I saw Theo Williams out there, the defense man. He's saying, raise the roof. They're just resting right now. It's in between play. But when you hear this crowd. Well, I think a lot of the coaches know that uh, noise can become a problem. They're going to ask them to probably be quiet down if oh. the package cannot hear. Oh, yeah, that always works. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Well, you asked the fans prior to the game, would, would they be up to the challenge of, of getting over last week and moving on as fans? I think right now we're finding out, at least verbally, they're prepared. You know, some of them told me they didn't even go home. They stayed right here in the parking lot. <laughs> well, you think of all of the big, big victories in LSU history, a national title and a contender for titles under Charlie McClendon all of those years, hard to believe that they would have never beaten a number one team. I mean, they, they beat number two ranked teams many yeah. times. Ole Miss in 59, Arkansas in the 66 Cotton Bowl, but, but never a number one team. Let's go down to Bob and see what's going on. Basically what happened, Tim, they ran the play after the play clock had run out, so there was a dead ball penalty. They're trying to get some time put back on the clock. Apparently that, they couldn't do that, so now they're just going to run the time off and let them run the play. Avery back in the game. Second down, 21. A dangerous spot to be in. Seconds back on the clock. Avery, he did just get out of the end zone. The ball just beyond the end zone. Boy, he was running for the goal line. The only thing is, he was running for the goal line coming out of the end zone. A toss in the end zone. And watch Avery just move out. Matthews, the left defensive end, gets him and brings him down just a foot outside the line. That, that shows you the confidence of its coordinator, Noel Mazzoni, has in Avery's speed because that's a dangerous call. Boy, a toss. He's got to go upstairs. He's got to pass it. Avery, this time between the tackles, dances to the five. All he had on his mind was creating some room for his punter, yeah. Reagan King. Joe Wesley there to make the stop. And you know, that's not a bad call in that situation. If you can get five yards on it, there's no Mazzoni. He's the offensive coordinator. He's just said, we just want to get out there far enough where we get that punter so he can stand back at 15 yards. 
A lot of field position will be played today. Kevin Cooper will punt it away from the end zone. Low snap. Odd punt for Falk, who calls for the fair catch at his 48-yard line. The Tigers will have quality field position after a 47-yard boot. 7-7 our score. Plenty of excitement, and the officials have been working over here. Yes, they have. You know, that, that crowd was so loud down there, you couldn't even see what was going on there. They're right on the end zone. They're, only, they're probably only 10 yards behind the end zone. They're so loud. Uh, if we don't have Bob Kessling down there, I certainly didn't. Know. I didn't see a flag. I thought they were simply talking about uh, the crowd perhaps being too loud, and, uh, you know, if they are for too yeah. long, you can be giving up a timeout. Rondell Mealy now dots the eye behind Tyler. up a couple. Mitch Baker, number 90, there to make the stop. And Tim, anytime you are outweighed on your defensive line, there's two things that you can do. You can bring another man in and play a, a multiple defense where you've got, if you play with five, you go to six. Or else you can shoot gaps. But when you talk about this LSU offensive line, they drive blocks so well. They're led up front by Alan Fanica. It's a hoss. And Fanica's so tall and Tyler is so short. Blocking schemes have changed so that Tyler and only 5'9 and 5'10 can have room to find passing lanes. This time it's a swing pattern out to Neely. That screen pass was worked very well by the Olds defense. Nate Wayne, number 38, the senior from Macon, Mississippi, ready to go. Tyler Wayne, number 38, number 38, the senior from Macon, Mississippi, read it perfectly. Well, Nate Wayne has got to play well today. They were not real happy with his play last week. And he plays this as well as you can. Just slides along, just slides along the line. You see him, number 38. Read the screen. Now get out, get in between people. Bang, bring him down. Don't let go. Hold on. That's a good play by Nate Wayne. Other than the option play, the oldest defense has been there every play. Third and 13. Tyler. Incomplete. Intended for Tyrell and Frazier. We're touching on... Tyler being so short, part of the problem for him in his early season slump was that the coaches determined that he had difficulty seeing over a 6'5 Fanica or a 6'5 Langley, the right tackle. So Morris Watt simply changed the blocking schemes so that uh, he would have room to see a potential receiver. Exactly. Kessler leading the country in punting, had a very poor one his first try. And Andre Rowan back deep at the Ole Miss 10. This more like the leading punter in the NCAA. 55 yards and through the end zone. Rebels will have it at their own 20 yard line when we come back. Halfway through the opening quarter in Death Valley, we're knotted at seven in this tradition rich rivalry. 7.04 remaining in the opening quarter. Let's go down to Bob Gessler. Tim, you know, Coach Donato has talked all, all week long about getting over the Florida game and looking ahead, but it's hard for the fans to. These are the t shirts selling outside the stadium today. It's hard to forget the first time, the first time LSU beat a number one team. And, of course, on the front it says the night the goalpost came down. And a good story about that. They did tear the goalpost down, but they didn't get them out of the stadium. So they just put the old ones back up. They didn't have to buy new ones. Not nearly as costly as C.M. Newton's problem <laughs> at Kentucky, where uh, pieces of that uh, post after the Alabama game are to be found so in the Commonwealth. Yeah, no. Well, they tried to take the goalpost out, but they couldn't get them out any of the doors. Seven-yard line. Rufus, a sophomore, great prospect, has caught now 20 passes after that one. I want to tell you, if I was if I was Ole Miss today, I'd throw to him 15 times today. I would. I've never. I haven't seen him drop a ball yet. That catch that he made in Auburn was unbelievable. One-handed catch. He's got great soft hands. You know, he was a basketball player. Had a chance to go to college in basketball. He played baseball. He's unbelievable. Two, two weeks ago in that night, Tennessee, Ole Miss had very few drops. I mean, Peterson made great catches, as did Avery, and there's Avery. Not much room this time, and it's Mark Roman. Now, we touched on this. Roman will be the spy on Avery. Wherever he goes, Roman goes, and uh, that was evidence there. Yep, exactly. That's what Roman is reading where number 20 goes to. You see Wesley come up in there also. Joe Wesley, number 48, yeah, the backer, center backer, but they are just, and look there, Roman's limping around a little uh, bit. And that would be very costly. They're a little thin in their secondary, LSU. 
And they need Roman out there to keep an eye on John Avery. I don't know that Roman can go. Look, they're trying to call a timeout. Patrick's, that's complete. Should be enough for the first down. French again, right at the 30-yard line. And you're right, Joe DiNardo was trying to get yeah. a timeout called prior to the snap. Well, Roman could not, he could not even backpedal. And Jerry DiNardo was on the sideline saying, timeout, timeout. Now they bring Roman over to the sideline. Looks like it may be more than an angle spring. Now what happens there is all week long, he has been the spy man on Avery. The backup doesn't get many chances, and now you take out the spy man on one of the most dangerous players on the other team, Avery. Rayon Hill has come in. Joining up with the rest of that secondary. Now Avery off the corner. Tigers do a nice job of funneling this one back in towards the hash mark. Kenny Mixon, former linebacker turned defensive end. He's got some quality speed. Number 59 of LSU making the play. Boy, this is this is a good slide right here. Now he should have the ball in his Take left hand. One. He sticks it in his Second right hand. Line. Now. Comes, try to come back up underneath, and you see the just the wave of players come that way. LSU's got great team speed along the line. Part of his problem in not carrying to the left is that big brace. Big old brace. Sheldon Morris in the game, and that's Morris, number 86. Sophomore transfer. Played at Little Wamba Junior College. And uh, this one has been there all day for the rest. Yes, it is. It's just an underneath. Now, he blocks right there. Now, a lot of people would say, wait a minute, he blocked before the pass, but the ball was in the air. It's a timing pattern. Stuart Patrick, part of a national championship junior college team at Delta Community College. Played his high school ball. the saving tackle. But, uh, you know, I think you anticipated oh, a block in the back. There was none. No, there was not. But Kenny Lucas, number 24, is hustling to try to get a block. He's running downfield. You'll see it. He's trying to cut off. Watch him come into the right of your picture right there. Boy, that was close to a clip. Watch this again. Now, that's Lucas right there. That's the block, but that's not a clip. Boy, he, I'll tell you one thing, he scored only by breaking the play, but he almost fumbled the ball. He did. It is a touchdown for the Rebels. Boy, that could have been a huge mistake. When you're in traffic, you don't take that ball and extend it. And watch what McAllister does as he goes over the top, he extends his hands. He breaks the plane. That's a touchdown. But if he's anything short, but he's got a good grip on that football. Third touchdown of the year for McAllister. Let's see with the extra point. Oh, he grazed the post. There's a marker down. The upright actually hit the football. It barely made it through, but we'll have to check the flag. Well, there's a flag thrown on the defensive side of the ball. Well, you're right, though. I, I waited a while to make the call. I, I thought for a moment he, in fact, had fumbled the football. Oh, anytime you extend that ball out like that, you better break the plane. The extra point is good, and it's a chop. A chop on the defense. That will be uh, exercised on the kickoff. Take a look at Kenny Mixon here, 59. Got a hand on that. He may have uh, gotten his mitt on that to deflect it. It just hit the upright, but managed to make it through. So the extra point is good, and the, the foul against the defense will be assessed on the kickoff. breaks the plane. Watch this. Up and over top. He extends out now. Right. If he fumbles that football, he's in serious trouble. Now you see the defense come in there. He's got a good grip on it. But you better break the plane because it's a very, very dangerous situation. Yeah, shows the strength, though, getting it back. Sure does. 
80 yards, seven plays, and McAllister, such a big part of Tommy Tuberville's scheme for today. For with McAllister back there, that gives him enough, another speed merchant and uh, the, uh, the possibility of moving Avery to a wide receiver position where the Rebels, frankly, lack some speed. Well, big decision here for Ole Miss, because what do you do? You're, you're kicking off from the 50-yard line with the penalty. Do you pooch kick? Or onside. Or onside, exactly. Tommy Tuberville has been tabbed uh, oh, you a, tapped him. a Mississippi <laughs> Riverboat gambler, and yeah. anytime he is in a position uh, as an underdog, he's apt to do anything. I mean, you could see fake punts, fake field goals, and onside kicks from him. This one will be... Tigers will have it at their 20-yard line. Back down to Bob. Tim, you know this Ole Miss team, they've got a very talented first uh, team. Remember, in their last game against Tennessee, they were only trailing 7-3 at halftime. It's a very youthful team. At the time, they play six or seven freshmen on offense. They have five true freshmen in their 2 deep four redshirt freshmen, 11 juniors, and so 11 sophomores and 13 juniors. It's a very young football team, and what Tommy Tuberville wants to do is just get this team into the fourth quarter with a chance to win. First and ten for the Tigers with Rondell Lee. Not in the eye. Nice move. Up about the 22-yard line, but Ronnie Hurd, number two. He comes up to make that play. The secondary coming up in run support, not allowing this play to develop at all. Boy, Hurt does a nice job. He's got outside force. That means he's got to turn it in. Look at that. Take the blocker on. Now, come right back inside. You don't play better than that. If you can get your strong safety to come up on the outside, play that block, and slice down inside and get apart, that's as well as can be coached. Vernell Hampton and Joe DiMaggio, the two tight ends for the Tigers here. Play fake and a boot line for Tyler. Caught at the 25 yard line by DiMaggio and Hurd there to make the play. Well, Hurd getting that first big start today. He's real active. He's all over the field. He read, read it very, very well. I think early indications are that the Rebels are the team flying to the football today, they not are. LSU. No, I think LSU got a little bit of a wake up call, but now it looks like they may have gone back to sleep. But watch Herb Tyler. He's a, he's a quality player. He can make big plays. Booty comes wide to the bottom of the screen on third and three. Tyler manages the line of scrimmage, and that's it. It'll be a pump formation coming up for LSU. Well, you talked about players flying to the football. The red shirts on that play. Watch this play. You're going to see the line coming off there. They give him good time. It's going to be a roll to the outside. Now, they get him in his face right here, and he's got to pull the ball down. He slips, but look at the yards that Tyler makes on his own. Just kind of weaving, bobbing, just kind of darting through there. Kessler to punt it away. Should get it off at the 18-yard line. Corey Peterson back deep. Oh, that's not very good by Kessler. Two out of three have been poor. That one was against the wind. And will be out of bounds at the 30-yard line. You know, LSU last week, only three and out two times. Today, they've been three and out three of four drives. Stay tuned at halftime for our buzz up. You call the play feature. A look at a big call from SEC games past. But I think that stat, courtesy Randy Hayden, is uh, very important oh. and telling about how Tuberville's team is prepared and perhaps LSU still experiencing an emotional hangover well, from a week ago. It's so hard to get your team up two weeks in a row because it's so emotionally draining. From the 30-yard line. Patrick overthrows John Avery. Patrick's pass. And again, uh, that's what they hope to do today. Make the secondary respect Avery going down the sidelines or running post patterns. Well, you know, this LSU t defense, as you mentioned, had 24 sacks coming into this game, and they get great pressure. That time, that time, Patrick could just stand back there, look downfield. He looked off two or three wide receivers. LSU's not getting the penetration that they put on Florida. Something to remember, Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator, told me, Ole Miss will give you different formations every week. They force you to adjust, as will Avery force you to adjust. He got all of that on his own. Positive yardage on a play that uh, 
did not appear to offer Avery that much. He's at the 34-yard line after that carry. Well, this is three stop and goes. Watch this. Go to the outside. Stop. Go back out this way outside. Stop. Now just make a dart back in and pick up some positive yards. But that's what fast speed and quick decisions make for you. John Avery's got incredible speed. Five defensive backs, the nickel package, uh, really the norm for LSU. First down, Peterson, the good hands people of the Ole Miss team, a 16-yard pickup. Well, what they're trying to do is a lot of crossing patterns, right to left. Watch this. Drive off the line, run underneath. And you see the crossing pattern again. Look at the time that Patrick has to find him. If LSU allows them that much time to stand back there and look at the football and look downfield, they could have serious problems today. They've got to get more pressure up front on the ball. There's Noah Mazzoni. Outstanding coach up east made his way down to the Tommy Tuberville staff. He has truly put together one quality staff. And so far, the team has responded with an outstanding effort against highly favored LSU coming off that big win against number one Florida a week ago. Got to get on with it, as DiNardo said. That score indicative of it. 14-7 Rebels leading the Tigers as we open the second quarter. Next Saturday, our Bell South SEC game of the week. Either Kentucky, Georgia, or Alabama, Ole Miss. A battle of quarterbacks in Athens. Tim Couch averaging an SEC best 346 yards passing. And Mike Bobo, a 67% completion rate, number one in the conference. Meanwhile, in Oxford, the Rebels hope John Avery can repeat another 100-plus yard performance as they take on Alabama. Check your local listings to find out which game we'll have our Bell South SEC game of the week. Well, Tim, one of the things that Ole Miss wanted to do was get the ball to John Avery. They said 30 to 35 times. I said, boy, that's a lot. First quarter, he had eight touches, 33 yards. And they've also used uh, French, the tight end, oh, yeah. which is going to be a dilemma for LSU. You have to understand, if you look at the Tigers defensively, that Carl Reese has had to make changes. Uh, he's... He's got very few linebackers, and uh, French, the tight end, can take advantage. And look at the numbers. Nothing in the air for Nothing. LSU. That's, that's really a surprise. But 91 yards, and you take was about 75 of that was on that one run. That uh, 72. 72 was on that one run. What a roller coaster ride it's been offensively. You go back to that bandy 7 6 game when uh, Woody Woodhopper had to give up a couple of penalties. It's number 24 who just got hammered. Cedric Donaldson is having such an outstanding year. Coming up to make the stop. Cedric, senior from Jackson, Mississippi, played at Provine. So, you know, a little something special in his mind today coming into this game with Ole Miss. I'm sure he's up for it. Look at that. Leading the NCAA in tackles and interceptions, you see, with six. I think he didn't keep that Florida ball. <laughs> to make the play number 48. They believe the Rebels staff that the Tigers linebackers are exploitable. That means Wesley, they'll work on him, and 35, Charles Smith, the sophomore from Forche in New Orleans. Those are going to be a couple of guys that Tommy Tuberville and Noel Mazzoni take a long look at in trying to exploit in this game. Well, if I was on this, at the end of this game, I would know how good Rufus French is. I'd be throwing the ball to him all day until he dropped one or didn't uh, did perform well. Third in the yard. A movement. Yeah, that was a hard count, and I think they drew LSU offsides. It looked uh, like Mixon that uh, was drawn offsides. You know, it's a good play right there by Matt Luke, the center. Whenever you see that penetration into that neutral zone, you snap the ball. Offsides on the defense. Tigers Again, watch the center. Nobody else is going to move. See, so you draw them offside. Now snap it, Luke. Bang. Snaps it. They get a free five yards. Pat Luke's already going. Yep, that's me. I got that one. Well, he's the first to officiate. He knows how to get on camera. Give the signal. First and ten at the 36. Tipped into the air. Patrick trying to come up with it and save it. 
Kenny Mixon, who was drawn off sides with some redemption that time as he batted that one into the air, and Patrick almost caught his own pass. Well, you know what I thought? When he, I thought he should have just knocked it down. Don't try to catch it. Try to knock it down. Watch how high the ball goes. Now, Patrick sees it. Now, does he try to catch it? No, he just kind of yeah. threw it. Well, maybe he did try to catch it, but... Uh, I think he was knocking it yeah, down. I think you're right. Exactly. That's what you want to do. You don't want to catch that football. Second and ten for Stuart Patrick. It'll be four yards shy of a first down. Timmy, and I keep on thinking, where is the LSU defense that came into this game with 24 sacks, 11 interceptions, and seven fumbles? Look at the time that Patrick has to stand back there. Look, look, look. Now just run down, pick up positive yards. College football is an emotional game. And uh, the emotional ride of a week ago may have taken something out of the Tigers today. Almost as many as last year were all through the season. But you're right, we haven't seen any sign of it today. Avery in motion. Patrick incomplete. Pass thrown a bit too low for Rufus French. Now if I'm Tommy Tuberville, I'm on the 31-yard line. I'm playing against LSU. I go for it. I just go for it. He's thinking about it. Oh, I know he is. Look at him just trying to figure out what, what his options are. Can you pooch it inside the 20? When you have scoring opportunities and you get in this situation, Oh, I think no. you just go for it. Well, remember this. Against Tennessee, they did try a fake field goal. And this would be, I think, a place where you consider the possibility of that, particularly after his timeout. All he needs is a little more time to think. You never know what he might pull out of the bag. 14-7, Rebels lead. Those are three. Subdued. Probably the term that should be used for this uh, crowd of better than 80,000. You know, interestingly, they, they they love to play at night here in Tiger Stadium. It has been mentioned, but you know, I thought what Jerry Gennardo said was very important to, to adjust the psyche of playing under the sunlight rather than the moonlight. That Tell the fans to get here at 3 o'clock in the morning. Your biological clock should be on time. And, exactly. Uh, the Rebels now with a decision to come up with, and... It looks as if we may see a late run on here yeah. by whether it's special teams or a fourth down go for it. Yeah, sometimes what they'll do is they'll run out real quickly, line right up on the ball and run the play before the defense can make those quick adjustments. Tough decision right here. Here they come. In essence, use the sidelines as your huddle location. They come out with a fourth down go for it opportunity. Mm -hmm. the shotgun. Mm -hmm. Andy and Avery are the set -up. Why not go to your best hands? You know what? Peterson was so shocked that he was uncovered. And look at Jerry DiNardo. He can just he can just feel it. But Peterson, watch him. He's just going to come off the line. He's going to come across and curl. Nobody is around him. You're not going to see a yellow shirt in the picture. Look. And when he catches it, he says, I'm going to get hit, right? I'm going to get hit. Turns around and says, holy mackerel, I can make some yardage. Not a linebacker within seven yards of it. Oh, exactly. play. He's blocked by Anding, gets up, and still exactly. makes the first contact. Yeah, he got cut down the line, slides, and just plays as well as you can play it. You're going to see Andy right there. He's going to come in, cut him right there, and look, and he still gets back up and runs down the line. That was just that was just a super play, and Charles Smith from the outside to force that play back in. Carl Reese told me that this young man stunts and twists as, as well as any young defensive end he's seen. Second and 14. it against the short side of the field. He had trips, three wide receivers to the wide side of the field but tried to catch them with Avery. Well, watch how close this play is to from breaking. It actually gets off late right here. See, he has to throw the ball. He has to wait. He's got pressure. He's got LeBlanc. The safety coming up there. He just kind of swats his arms and just knocks him down. But if Avery was able to slide and make that, 
Third down, about 12 yards to go. You know what I do? If French is in there, I go right back to French. This will be the 12th play of the drive. because it all of a sudden it takes you almost out of field goal range. You can see the reaction there. That's Joe Wesley, 48, the middle backer, gets the sack, but you just can't take that because that changes, that makes the field goal the 50-yarder instead of being about a 40. Lindsay, his longest is 52. This is into the wind. Remember, they did try a big against Tennessee. This one will be wide to the right and no good. So the Tigers... After surrendering a fourth down, go for it to Ole Miss. Come up with a huge sack and a quality defensive stand. Well, it's like their defense is starting to wow. wake up and you see the crowd is bowing down. You see the bowing motion. They're saying, thank you, thank you. Gives some emotion yeah. to the offense, the quality play from their defense in that series. So if you're Tommy Coverfield, you know when you get those opportunities, you've got to score. Foster, easily LSU's greatest threat at wide receiver, comes up with his first catch. It's a nine-yard pickup. Sophomore from West Jefferson in Harvey, Louisiana. He's got great speed, and they believe that uh, he's as good as any of Florida's or any of Tennessee's receivers. They just don't throw the ball as much here. Well, when you have somebody who can run that option play like Herb Tyler runs it, I don't know if I throw it and they had, what, Cecil Collins before he got his broken leg, Falk, Neely. I mean, they've got a stable of running backs. Second down in the yard to go. The freshman from West Monroe, Tommy Banks, is very important to LSU's offense, leading the way for Falk. And you see Roman leading. Let's go down to Bob Kessler. He's got more. Yeah, they're taking Mark Roman off to the locker room right now. Earlier in the game, he hurt his leg. He tried to play that last series, but came out. They're taking him in. The x-ray is fibula. He just can't run on it. They want to make sure it's not cracked or broken. And so he's going in for x-rays right now. Double tight ends for LSU. Again, Tyler rolling out. from Eunice, Louisiana. Boy, you go down, you go back to that series by Ole Miss when they when they took that sack. Dead ball, motion penalty against 
LSU is going to move back five yards, but you go back to that penalty and that, that sack where they missed that field goal opportunity. This is where you'd love to have the diesel. This spot on the field is exactly where they'd love to have talent. Look at that average. Eight point three yards at the time he carried the ball. You know, and he wears number 34. He's a modern-day Earl Campbell because he's got the speed to beat you wide but prefers running over you. I never thought, I know Earl Campbell had great speed, but Earl would run over you, but I think Cecil Collins has got better speed than Earl Campbell. The option again, Tyler this time keeps it, and the Rebels do a better job of defending it with thought. As the uh, the running back behind, Herb Tyler, a little jawing going on between he and a few of the but Rebels. This is, but this is the way you play it. You have to play the quarterback first. You've got to make him toss the ball. You can't allow him to turn up. And you see they're right there to bring him down again. And that's Walker Jones, the outside backer, who's got to play the quarterback. Come up, there's the toss man. He's got the toss man to the outside. Second down. Got to cover him well on that play. That's why That's why the result was no yards. That's why you just can't get beat with the option play. Second and goal. from the diesel I just know. running over the Ole Miss oh, Rebels. That's exactly what I thought. I said, wait a minute, this is Kevin Falk. He runs around people, but look at him put his head down right there on the four-yard line, just run over and dive into the end zone. That was Walker Jones he ran over. His fourth touchdown rushing this year. And uh, the defensive stand did give some emotion to this LSU offense. We're tied at 14. Kevin Falk running right over the Rebels. Back after this word from your local SEC stations. We're tied at 14 with 7.40 remaining in the first half, along with Dave Rowe and Bob Gessler, Tim Randall, and the senior from Karen Cole, Ray Ritchie. Gets it. That could have counted if you were playing in Australia. <laughs> Look at those names. He now moves to number four on the career rushing chart. Dalton Hilliard, part of the Dalton and James gang in the 80s. Charles the Great, Charles the Great, Alexander in the 70s with uh, Charlie McClendon, his coach. Then Harvey Williams, a magnificent inside-outside runner. And Terry Robisky, now an assistant coach in the NFL. Those are some tremendous names in Tiger history that Kevin Fox is a part of. Kenny Mixon and Chuck Wiley collaborate. You know, Wiley is a real vocal leader. You had a chance to chat with him earlier this year. Uh, he's, a, he's a guy that really values the opportunity of, of taking over the reins of this LSU defense. Oh, you got to love him. I mean, he is something else. Have a little battle on the outside here. A little extracurricular activity out there. <laughs> That's Cummings, number 19. Just trying to make sure that he's down. <laughs> Touched up a little bit by Chris Cummings. Patrick, that's Hurd. Grant Hurd, the sophomore from Lake Jackson, Texas. And uh, that's the young man that Patrick wanted to find for that fake pattern when he gave up the sack. You see uh, Herb Tyler, Abram B. Uh, down on the sidelines as they continue to make their adjustments through the course of this game. Stuart Patrick. Giving up that sack right now, that looms largely in LSU's huge. comeback. It's huge. And now the decision is third down and one. Do you want to get the Avery or do you want to pass one? Third down and two. awfully close. I don't know if he made that first down. He lunged at the last well, seeing the flag, down. but you've got to look at that that marker on the sideline. I don't know if he made it. Uh, I thought he did. It'll depend again on the left or right foot mark. Uh, I thought he had made it with that last lunge. Boy, I don't I don't know. I don't think he, I don't think he made it because what he did is he kind of went out of bounds. Yeah, he needed to get to the 30-yard line. You know what? Watch where the where the mark 
comes, will it be with a left or right foot after he goes out of bounds? Well, right here, he goes out of bounds. Look, look, him lunge right there, but he lunged out of bounds. He needed to lunge back inside. Right here, watch, he's going to go out of bounds. They need to lunge back inside. See, he turns and goes out of bounds. And that's a good tackle by Wesley to keep him from making the move. Exactly. And I mentioned Mississippi Riverboat Gambler inside his own 30-yard line. Another timeout being taken, this time by LSU. They didn't feel that they had the defense necessary for a tougher little go for it. It won't be the first or the last time they go on fourth down today. We'll be back. Jerry DiNardo back into this game and tied at 14. And Tommy Tuberville playing as if he were down rather than tied. Going for it inside his 30-yard line. Deuce McAllister is coming to the game. That's who I think he has to go to. It's got to be a running play. Either that or maybe catch French off the line. But everybody's going to be in tight. Handing in motion. McAllister, first down. And he got it with relative ease. Kenny Mixon comes up to crack him. But again, I mean, give oh. Tuberville credit. I mean, that, that takes a lot of willpower to go for it inside your 30 in a tie game. Well, you just can't go three and out. Look, exactly. McAllister actually got hit in the backfield. Watch him. He's going to get hit from the outside, but he just kind of sheds it. Bang, just kind of gets in there, stretches and picks it up. Good block up by uh, front by Wade and Kitchen. That's the kind of garden tackle. That's the kind of decision making game that makes the alumni very happy. Oh, Avery back in the game. again for another first down. I would wear him out. I promise you, as big a target as Rufus French is, and the way he runs, he's 6'4", 245. You're going to see him just come a little crossing pattern right there, just plant, come right across, right to your screen. Gets a good block, gets a little pick. His basketball days from the official. But I'd go to him until he just couldn't play anymore. Well, the, the linebackers have to respect that area, you see the 30 yards, and three of those four receptions have been for first down. Well, you know, you talk about what an athlete he was. I understand he was drafted in baseball. He was one of the top 35 picks in the nation in basketball and takes a football scholarship. Another audible by Patrick, and he finds Peterson again. That's the second time we've seen Peterson brace himself for a hit and yeah. give up about five yards. Peterson, they need to. what he needs to do is say, hey, listeners, nobody around you. Turn around and run. Use that speed. Good soft hands, nice concentration, good pocket. But he needs to turn around quickly and go, wait a minute, I got some room. And Yana Lucas, number 24 coming in for him. I think that may be what Mazzoni's talking to him about right <laughs> I now. Promise you. Second down and three. shy of midfield. Mixon makes the tackle. I saw Mixon on that. That wasn't a picture-perfect tackle. Mixon kind of had him as he was going by, and it looked like he was roping a, a calf or something as he went by. An illegal, Replay the down. An illegal formation against uh, the Rebels. Be sure to visit the official internet side of the SEC for up-to-date stats, game previews, coaches' comments, and a lot more. The SEC online at SEC Sports. Dot com. What that penalty was, Tim, was not enough men on the line of scrimmage. And uh, Tommy Tuberville and Noel Mazzoni are going to give you so many formation changes. Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator of LSU, said no team that he had seen on film changed their formations from week to week any more than the Rebels. Second and eight. See right there, now he's not down yet. Oh, that is awfully close. Yeah, I thought it's awfully close. Watch that first knee. Yeah, you're looking for the knee on the ground. Now, can't tell from there. Oh, that's a tough one. That could have gone either way, but 
credit Chris Beard, the yeah. junior from Bird High School in Shreveport for the strip. The Tigers get a break, first down at midfield. inside the 30 yard line 22 yards on that run boy you look for things that turn a football game and that's a huge one if he doesn't if he, if he doesn't make that fumble they still have the football but watch small gets out there reads his blocks well gets good blocks up front and just turns on that speed to the outside at the 28 yard line in a couple of games, not including today, it makes a living by Sol Mets. Six rushes for 72 yards today. I think it's noteworthy that the size problem Ole Miss has at linebacker really comes into play when you're trying to tackle the likes of a Falk or a Cecil Collins. Backs that are as big as your linebackers. Well, Falk is not that big. I mean, he's 192. Yeah, but I you mean, got a 205 pound exactly. handbag. You got a good point there. You sure do. Two. Look at that. Boy, what a difference a year makes. Plus 11. That's first in the SEC. Second and two. Is the young man on the ground, and and again we point up, he's six feet tall, 235 pounds, a linebacker, arguably their biggest impact player on defense, and the, the freshman running back, Banks, six feet tall, 245 pounds, exactly, and uh, that's just a numbers problem that does not equate well if you're the defense, and Tommy Tuberville knows that. Let's go down to Bob Kessler. You talk about Nate Wayne. He also has the 38 number of Chucky Mullins, but also he has 21 scratched on his helmet. And that's in honor of Kiefer McGee, the outstanding running back from Mississippi State who tragically died in a swimming pool accident before the season. They were friends when they were growing up. They used to play basketball together. And he remembers Kiefer, and he was so sad and heartbroken when the tragedy hit Kiefer McGee. But he has now Kiefer's number scratched on the back of his helmet and also on the gloves he wears and of course also has the great honor of wearing Chucky Mullins number 38. This is a critical period in this game. Losing the possibility of losing a Nate Wayne really comes into play. Dave if you're if you're thinking about uh, staying in this game and that controversial fumble for Ole Miss. I mean, the, the defense for Tommy Tuberville now must come up with a big stop. Well, they've got to come up with a big stop. If they can hold him in a field goal situation here, that would be a big stop. But you take out your number one middle linebacker, and that's kind of tough because you know that LSU is just going to drive the football. They're just going to play, use those big linemen and roll off that football, use that strength, and you take out now your number one middle linebacker. And if you're Tommy Tuberville, you say, well, I've gone for it twice on fourth down to keep drives alive. Once a sack and second a turnover, turning his offense away exactly yeah, they need it they need good things to happen to them all day long well, a very pensive Tommy Tuberville and you see the concerned fans from Ole Miss you know in this series Ole Miss fans they're used to coming to Baton Rouge <laughs> uh, prior to television coming in vogue in the 60s when Johnny Bach was coaching in the post-World War II era Ole Miss played a a great number of games that were their home games here in Baton Rouge so they could get a bigger paycheck. And uh, many will tell you in that state that that's one of the reasons the Tigers lead the overall series. First down, 10 Tigers. Over three minutes to play in the half. After Falk had made that initial cut, Hurd, the sophomore, number two, makes a nice one-on-one -on -one stop. Yeah, Hurd me very active. He's, he's playing the backside on this cut. Now, right there, if he's able to beat him right there, 
he goes into the end zone. But Hurd just looked him right in the belly. Doesn't go for the fake right here. Just looks right in the middle. Get, look, you see the arms around him? You wrap him up. That's what coaches tell you. Wrap him up and hold on. DiMaggio and Hank and the two tight ends come in for the time. through oh, that hole. Untouched. Watch the point of attack right there. Look at the hole that he runs through. Untouched. Boy, big blocks up front. Fanica, Lally, Langley, I should say, and McClure just driving off the football, just making huge hole. You think Nate Wayne might have been near that play? Well, that's a Nate Wayne play. He's the one that has to make that. He has to slide to it. And he just went out on that play. Credit the Tigers for going to that area. And he's just shy of a hundred yards. Wow. Look at that average. Over 10 yards a carry. So the Tigers, who were down early in this game, take advantage of an opportunity off a turnover at midfield and cash in quickly. Well, look at the big man up front. You're going to see the blocks up front. And look at this. No, untouched. Everybody's got a man glued to him, and he just dives into and just storms into the end zone. So now a real critical period for... Ole Miss offensively. They they must answer yeah. this LSU charge because their domination really came to the forefront in that last series. Down to Bob Kessling again. That's uh here's the great running back from LSU, Cecil Collins. Cecil, talk about your injury and where you stand right now. Well, right now, you know, right now we don't know where I'm making. You know, it's been what two weeks since I've been hurt. And you know, I've just got this cast Tuesday, you know, every week, you know, I take this cast off and get an x-ray. So you know, Tuesday I'm gonna get another x-ray. And they're going to see how long it takes from here. So, when know. do you think you might be back? Any idea? Well, you know, right now I really don't know. It's, I realize the doctors are telling me the things that's going on right now. I, they say it's six to eight weeks, but, you know, I'm going to work hard. I'm a hard worker, so I'm going to try to get back quick as I can. But, you know, if things don't happen right, you know, I'm not going to come back unless I'm 100%. You sat there last week for Florida. Saturday today, you want to be on the sideline oh, sooner. Yeah, real bad. You know, it's, last week, you know, I missed a big game. You know, I felt I was with the team in spirit, but you know, I wanted to go out there and help the team as much as I could. Same thing this week, but, you know, things happen. So, you know, that's just the way things was meant to be. So whenever I get ready, I'll be back out there to help the team. So talk about the injury. How did it happen? What do you remember about it? Well, you know, it was a, uh, it was a toss play to the left. And, you know, I just – I was trying to share the tackle, trying to stiff arm a man. And, my, you know, my leg got called up under somebody. Then the other man came and hit me. You know, it just it snapped right then, you know. And at the time, you know, I, I really didn't remember anything at the time. I kind of felt like I blacked out a little bit, but I guess I did. But – you know, it was a lot of pain at the time, and you know, I went through a lot of things, but, you know, I'm just, right now, you know, I'm just getting my mind right under the Lord. going to put me in situations that I couldn't handle, so, you know, I'm going to be all right. Cecil, can't wait to see you back with me. Good luck. Right, thank you. Cecil Collins. Corey Peterson hits the grab from Partridge and is just shy of the 30-yard line. Well, you can tell that the young man's kept it in perspective. Nice work by Collins Pick through the course nine. of the year and uh, they can't they can't well, opt for a medical well, well, shirt either because he's five games deep into yeah. the season. You see there's the yards that he had single rushing single game rushing yards. That's pretty dang good 232 yards. Well, he's getting to know some of the fans a little better. Yeah exactly. <laughs> Patrick's pass is incomplete. All right. This is uh, a third down and short yardage coming up after the incomp uh, incompletion by uh, Stewart. And, and Tommy Tupperville tired of seeing these third down and short yeah. situations. But this is a third down, very makeable third down. It's third down and about a foot to go. So what you do is you throw up top, look downfield, have a safe play. Don't try to force the ball into trouble. Really, Ole Miss has not made many mistakes. That fumble, that controversial fumble there, questionable fumble, really led to that last score. But they stayed in this football game because they have not made mistakes. They need to continue that. Here's McAllister. important that they get him involved in the remaining moments of this first half. Chuck first Wiley half. makes the tackle. We've already seen the impact of Avery, but, you know, you got to give him a, a rest and uh, and to utilize him as a receiver from time to time. McAllister's got to be a factor at that tailback spot. Well, you're, playing, you're playing clock control right now. You've got a minute 41 seconds left. 
you're far from a field goal try. You've got a pretty stiff wind in your face. You don't want to make a mistake and give LSU an opportunity, but if you get a chance to get one of the big ones to get downfield, you want to take advantage of it. Well, French, that's the first one I've seen him drop. He dropped it at the 45-yard line, then a flag came falling. Well, you know what happened on that ball? He stumbled. And that's why, that's why, just as he was catching the football, it looked as if he stumbled in the grass. But the flag was completely away from him. Yes, the flag was. was across the field. I don't think it involved him, but it was thrown in the secondary. A lot of scoring in this game, and we've seen uh, our fair share of penalties. The uh, indication this one is Illegal touches on the offense. Lost it down. Second down. Illegal touching. Is that what he said? Illegal touching? That yeah. means that somebody on the offensive line had to touch the football. Right. Maybe that bounced off somebody. And uh, Roman making his way back to the locker room a little early. Nate Wayne, we are told, does have a, an ankle problem, and uh, they're going to need him desperately in the second half. You lose Nate Wayne, and uh, that's a bitter blow for the Rebels in the second half if he can't come back. Second down, 15. Nothing doing against the Tigers between the tackles today. Anthony McFarland, the first to make contact against John Avery. And Tim, again, that's clock control. Now, if you're LSU, you want to call a timeout. You call a timeout, stop that clock. Don't let him do that. Take advantage of the win, which is brisk. That's behind LSU in the second quarter. Coming up at halftime, Bob Kessler. Tim, coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at what else is going around college football today. It's a very busy and important day, not only in the SEC, but in some of the other conferences. We'll talk about that. Also, we'll talk with one of the great quarterbacks in LSU history, Alan Richard. Plus, we'll get you an injury update on uh, some of the key parts of this first half. And, of course, Rose Rewinds. And the Golden Band from Tigerland. And the Ole Miss Band also here performing to the sold-out crowd at Tiger Stadium. Death Valley. The magic has indeed returned under Jerry DiNardo. We look forward to that from your host and also pretty good lead blocker while doing an interview with Bob Kessler. Yeah. <laughs> now the band's ready. Look at them. We're ready. <laughs> Tommy Tuberville told Bob Kessling at the outset of today's game, we need something good to happen early if we were to have a chance. He got that, but uh, his offense let him down just a bit with a turnover, and I think that sack by Patridge. Everything changed when he was looking for Hurd on that fade route. After a fourth down, go for it inside the LSU 30-yard line. Well, they had great field position on that sack. He loses about 10, 11 yards, and then you're trying a 50-yard field goal as, con as compared to a 40-yard field goal. Mm -hmm. They hang it down. They haven't been able to get receivers mm -hmm. three deep mm -hmm. today, and uh, that's something Ole Miss really wanted to accomplish against LSU. Double tight end one. Inside the LSU 40-yard line, it would have been a, uh, a very difficult catch to make, but one that certainly, I'm sure, Andre Roan... I think that hit Roan right in the hand. Yeah, I, I think, think it was a well-thrown ball. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he believes yeah. he should have caught this one. Yeah, blue play fake now. Throw it up and watch Roan's hands come up for the football. That hits him right in the hands. Good defensive coverage. That the quarterback running great straight with him, but very catchable football. Absolutely. Fair catch call for by Falk at the 28-yard line. And that's where LSU will have it. First down and 10, a 40-yard punt. Don't forget, coming up next week, one or the other, Kentucky against Georgia or Alabama against Ole Miss. Check your listings to see the game that we have for you. 12.30 Eastern time, 11.30 Central. Either way, it'll be an outstanding game. So much changed in this conference last week when LSU pulled off the unthinkable knockoff number one. Now so many more teams believe they have postseason life. Oh yeah, everybody was breathing fresh air. Good series here for LSU. If you get the opportunity, go for it. They're looking for Abram Booty down the sideline. Incomplete. 
I thought he locked in a bit early on Brady. Foster appeared to really be breaking wide open. Well, exactly. What you want to do in this situation is you, you've got two really complex situations. You've got 57 seconds left. You've got to go deep quickly to pick up big yardage. You've got some timeouts so you can call. You can use those timeouts. But if you're Ole Miss, if you get a chance to stop them, you stop them too. If you get a chance to stop that clock, you get the ball back. Second down and 10. Very intelligent football player getting out of bounds after picking up the first down. And that took seven seconds off the clock, that run. Yeah, and he was determined to get to the sidelines, yeah. but only after he had gotten the first down. Exactly. They have worn that play out, that little fullback lead into the weak side. They have worn him out today. That's one of the, one of the chances, or one of the situations that Old Miss is going to have to make a correction on. Falk now over 100 yards in the first half, and the Tigers leading 21-14. Play fake again. Booty. Abram Booty's first catch of the day at the 47-yard line of Ole Miss, and that's the route where the adjustment was made in blocking schemes to allow Herb Tyler a better opportunity to see. Now look at this play up front. Everybody stuffed on the line. Bang. Everybody locked up front. Look at Tyler just standing back there. No penetration in his face. And that play again took seven seconds. Well, I'll tell you, that's just big blocking up front. That's big man on big man giving her Tyler time to look downfield. You may want to call timeout. Clock, play clock was down. Still plenty of time with which to work and uh, Herb Tyler comes to the sidelines to chat about it now we touched on the importance of the importance of the games being played now because of the uh, LSU win against Florida now suddenly the Florida Auburn game becomes so much more important than uh, perhaps many people would have thought uh, Alabama now controls its own destiny uh, if you think about it were they to win out they get to play both Auburn and LSU they still have a very good chance of making it to the SEC championship game. And all of a sudden, you think about that Florida game, and they lose to Johnson, the quarterback. That's He's right. suspended for a game, so it's a very winnable game. You see Auburn's position, LSU, right there. And remember this, if you're an LSU fan, you're thinking, well, Auburn still has to play more rivals on its schedule than any other team in the SEC West because both Bama and Georgia, one a, yeah. a border rivalry, the other obviously an in-state rivalry and a very special one. Two tough outs for Terry Bowden's team, even after Florida today. Well, you just think about situations that uh, lost by Florida. I don't think a lot of people thought that LSU would win. I mean, I, I know it's home crowd. I know all those different factors. But let me tell you, LSU played as fine a football game as you could ever play. A lot of fans were like meteorologists. They revised their forecasts on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tyler Well, Ole Miss needed that. And they get it from Michael Boone, sophomore from... West Helena, Arkansas. Boy, not a bigger play by Boone that time. He breaks free. He's the right defensive tackle. Just burst in there, broke free, made the sack, and he's going to take them out of field goal position. Flag does come down. Or Tyler spiking the football. They'll stop the clock with 29 seconds left. No timeouts remaining for LSU. So he had to spike it. Third down now. And it's third down and 18 to go after the sack. Boy, I can tell you how big a sack that was for Michael Boone. They only had six sacks coming into this game. And they may have just ended the half only seven points down because now Tyler's throwing long distance. He's got third and about 17 yards to go. Fought. The crowd will not like this call. I hear a few subtle, <laughs> subtle negative responses they quieted them down though some of the fans got on some fans there i think and shut them up after that third and exactly. 18 run <laughs> well that's going to take us to the half unless somebody calls timeout i wonder if old miss is going to call timeout and say hey, let's go for a block because they worked on a block they felt they had a key that they could go off that may be what tommy tuberville's thinking hey don't let this clock run out six seconds left in the half They've got a good punt block. Who knows what can happen? You take every opportunity. Don't just be satisfied going in seven points down at half. Well, that was great crowd control by some of the people in the crowd. After the third and 18 <laughs> call, a few people, they got up. They were very upset, and then they 
they suddenly said, well, wait a minute. Uh, we, we have come from 14 7 down exactly. to get a lead. Let's not boo our young men. But they are going to force them to punt, the Rebels are. Well, I wonder if they're going to punt. Because with six seconds left, maybe you just might, one might just kind of sweep the football because, again, you may be able to run out the clock. This is not close enough for Ole Miss to make a field goal try because it'd be about a, what, a 57, 59 yard field goal from this. Uh, yeah. Against this, the wind. Yeah. Really not a possibility. So I wonder if, well, maybe they are going to punt now. <laughs> they kind of thought about the quarterback just taking the ball and running it. But six seconds seems like an eternity sometimes. And all they told Kessler is just get the football off. Don't worry about this. You can see Ole Miss, 10 people up on the line. They're coming after him. Can he get all of that ball? That'll help his uh, stats lead quite a bit. And we have come to the end of the first half. The Rebels popped out early, but the emotional hangover that was anticipated ended quickly, courtesy Kevin Falk. Over 100 yards rushing for the junior from Karen Crow, Louisiana. And remember, LSU is 12-0 coming into today's game anytime Falk has 100 yards or more. And LSU leads it 21-14 here at halftime. Bob Kessling coming up at halftime is downstairs now. Jerry, talk about the first half. Took your while to get the team a while to get started. Well, I think that has a lot to do with Ole Miss. I mean, they're playing hard. They played harder than we did early in the game. And now I think both sides are playing about equally as hard. And we've got another half of football. Jerry, thanks. Thanks, Rob. Halftime. The LSU Tigers go to the locker room leading Ole Miss 21-14. Halftime activities from Baton Rouge coming up in just a moment. Today's Bell South SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by Sonic, where we invite you to drive in for a change. And by BP. At BP, everything we do is to keep you moving. Imagine becoming the person you... For LSU, keep pounding smash mouth football and D put it away. They can win this game if they get a turnover on their defense. Yeah, you really do get a feeling that uh, if Nate Wayne can't come back, uh, LSU can really take advantage of Ole Miss defensively. So if the Tigers defense can come up with a big play, that thing's scoring oh, yeah. off a turnover themselves, then Ole Miss is really a trouble. Well, Nate Wayne played one of those last plays. I saw him on one of the last plays. So that was a good sign that he came back in the football game. They can't play without him. They, they're not thick enough on their two deep. They just, they're real thin up front. They've got good front line players, but just don't have those, that caliber of backups. One of the things that makes SEC football so great, everywhere you go, the pomp, the pageantry, the colors, the sounds. It's a holy day of obligation, whether under the sunlight or the moonlight. When you're in Sports News Paradise, the state of Louisiana, on a college football Saturday, the second half is coming right up. Dear BP, what if you had special trucks that could turn into gas stations? Then we could buy what we need and get to where we're going a lot faster. Signed, Dan. Dear Dan, we like to keep people moving from pay at the pump to fast BP shops. P.S. We sent your letter to our engineering group. BP, we keep you moving. for tomorrow, today, MEA Medical Clinics. at 3 on JTV 12. Nationwide Insurance. 
Check the yellow pages for the nationwide agent nearest you. By Toyota. Toyota every day. And by Nations Bank. Another sellout crowd in Baton Rouge. The LSU Tigers and the Ole Miss Rebels underway. Along with Dave Rowe and Bob Kessler and Tim Brando, happy to have you with us as we prepare to open the third quarter. Ole Miss, you'll recall, did win the toss and deferred to open the game, so they will get it as we begin the second half. And Tim, they have an excellent game plan. They use a lot of crossing routes, go to the French, mix it up, use an Avery for the outside. They need to keep that. They just need to keep doing what they did well. They're in this football game because they played extremely well. LSU, they've got to come out and take control of this football game. I can promise you that Jerry DiNardo at halftime told his guys, say, listen, crank it up. This is not a walk in the park. Ole Miss is playing good football. They need to come out and play their style of ball. And now Lucas, John Avery back deep as Richie boots it. Almost through the end zone again. Rebels will have it at their 20 yard line. Something we should point out that though they do have the football, they don't have the wind. Patrick again will be going against the wind here in the third. They will have it in the fourth quarter. We look at the possession chart, and uh, you know, obviously they were very successful early in this game, and the two the fumble and the missed field goal led to touchdowns and, and, and for the opposition. That's very important. They have to maintain drive. Exactly. And two mistakes on each play. The one sack by Patrick and, of course, the fumble. Dumps it out to Avery. What a read by Troy Twilley. He's the nickel back. Two linebackers. And the Twilly's got to make that play. In essence, the strong safety is playing the weak side linebacker. Yeah, look at Patrick. He gets stuck in the back on the play. It's a little delay slip screen out to the flat. And Kenny Mixon, 59, just levels him. He gets up slow. Well, we have not seen Romero Miller, the highly yeah. thought of freshman who normally gets some snaps in every game the Rebels play. There's that slant. It's dropped. Little quick slant. Looking for Robert Reed, that's the play that was really devastating on the Tigers at the outset of this game. Well, you can't drop this football. It's a very, very, very catchable football as we look at Miller there. A young man that uh, replaced Patridge in the second half of the Tennessee game for a couple of series. And has performed admirably. Mississippi High School Player of the Year. Just a season ago, a true freshman. Well, these initial drives, they really set the tone. And for Ole Miss, they need desperately a first down. Standing start for LSU's defense. Reed, the intended receiver, again Twilly over there to cover. And the crowd responds to the Tigers' defense. Well, LSU did exactly what they had to do. They came out and shut them down, three and out. They're going to get the football back. We know how dangerous Spock is back there receiving the football. They should get great field position. Kevin Cooper to put it away. It falls. Inside his own 40-yard line. Fair catch called for at the 44. The Tigers take over first and 10 after a 38-yard punt by Cooper. Well, we touched on it at halftime, and it certainly bears mentioning again. Now you, you, if you're Ole Miss, you say, well, we've got to come with our guns loaded. Nate Wayne's so important to this team, and let's go down to Bob Kessler. Tim, you talk about Nate Wayne, it left in the first half, now he's back in his linebacker position. He has a sprained ankle, a sprained right knee. They take them both up at halftime. They're just going to see if he can go on. And he's there to answer the call. Let's take a look at that possession chart for the Tigers. They had that 72-yard option play for a touchdown on that second series but uh, Ole Miss did the job in the latter stages of the first quarter and early in the second and then the Tigers took advantage of power football well you saw three three of those first four series were three and out and that's not what you want if you're LSU LSU needs to play ball for three second down six the option
He'll be very close to the first down. Perhaps a yard shy, and that's all. And Ronnie Hurd has made the stop. Well, you see what happens on the play this time. They play the quarterback. As the quarterback goes down the line, you've got to make the quarterback pitch. Now, right there, you see right there, they make the quarterback pitch. Now it's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Ronnie Hurd just kind of zeroes him in. That was a good play. Falk still picks up good yardage, but it didn't work as it did before because they made the quarterback pitch the football rather than turn up. He picked up five on the play, so it's third down a yard to go. in the corner comes up to make the tackle. What we're witnessing today is I think the essence of why you have to have depth at running back to be a winner in this league. Well, look at the blocks right there in front. I was looking at Lewis Williams, number 70. He's the big freshman that came in there. And he's playing well, drive blocking. They have made a living off that left side, running that power football. That's just a straight ahead kick out with the fullback and just pour it on. down Timothy Strickland comes up with him and I, I mentioned this earlier yes there are teams like Kentucky and Auburn that love to throw the football but how many teams could lose a player as good as Cecil Collins oh, yeah. and come back with the likes of a Kevin Falk and a Rondell Neal not many Georgia perhaps Alabama Florida and then who else yeah I can't think of not that many teams look at that rushing average 8.9 and they just keep on wearing them out The freshman, such a outstanding young man, both in the classroom and on the field. He scored a 33 on his ACT. So a young man, uh, very knowledgeable. Stopped by Mitch Baker, number 90. Yeah, Baker getting a little bit of playing time in there. He's a sophomore, getting a little bit of few reps. And that's that's what uh, Tommy Tuberville does so well. Is he gets a lot of players involved in the game, keeps them active in practice, and lets them play during the game. Foster and Moody come flanked. To the same side on third and five. Pocket breaks down. Tyler. Well, he may have lost the ball. I think he may have come up with it. That's a, an opportunity lost for Ole Miss. Boy, you see the look on from Brock Kreitz. The ball just bounced right back into the arms of Tyler in what could have been a turn. Boy, it looked as if the ball was, came right out and just went right on the point. But look at the rush. Ole Miss getting a rush. Outside, that's Mar Scott, 95, breaking down. Now coming up in there. Good, that's a good uh, rush by Mitch Baker. We saw the ball come out right at the tail end there. Casey Tabor will hold for Danny Boyd. His longest only 30 yards. Block. Tabor comes up with it. And the Rebels will have it at their own 47-yard line. And uh, this is just the kind of adrenaline that Tommy Tuberville needed to pump into his team. Well, I think the ball was just a low kick because they block it right over the middle. No penetration, but look, just up high. Strickland got it. Yeah, Strickland jumps right over top of the middle. And you're not supposed to block him in the middle like that because the ball needs to clear at about eight, nine feet over the line of scrimmage. Well, special teams have been a problem for Donardo, particularly with Wade Ritchie's problems. He made the change and put Danny Boyd in. Close game at some point, you gotta figure it's gonna cost him. That's Peterson. Inside Tiger territory at the 49, Cedric Donaldson wraps him up. Well, one thing that Ole Miss has done is they've shortened up their passing game. Those patterns are only 8 to 10 yards. And Tommy Tuberville wants to take a lot of pressure off of his quarterback. A lot of pressure that that defensive line has been putting on. They haven't been getting him to him because it's a short passing game. Look for French on that little curl. Look out there for Peterson. See if you can find Hurd on a crossing pattern. We saw Roan early. Short game. After that last miss, LSU's field goal kickers cumulatively three of 11 and four blocks. That's incredible. Avery. Trying to beat the linebacker to the corner. Shy of the first down, it appears. At the 46-yard line. 
Boy, I was watching Rufus French that time, number nine. He's in motion. Watch the block he gets right here. There he comes. Boom. He just drives him off the line. He was driving Arnold Miller, the big defensive end. Two yards. Third Only down. a gain of a couple, two. even with that block by Fritz. Third down and two. And uh, they're three of nine today, are the Rebels. you got to believe this is four down turns. Oh, absolutely. Avery again. So very Avery difficult Avery. without a power back yeah. to get that kind of yards. Yeah, they rely on Avery's speed. I think he's short again. Well, you know what happened on that play? The, there's a marker that goes right along with the chain marker. As he goes out of bounds, you see that marker in the top of your screen? Watch that marker get kicked out of the bounds, and Avery can't find where the marker is to dive for the first down. Now, Matt Luke, fourth the down. starting center, is now hobbling off the field. That makes this fourth down go for it much more difficult. They're going to have to call timeout. The clock's running down, too. Uh, see, Charlie yeah, Perkins, the backup. Oh, yeah. It's coming to the game where you don't want to lose your offensive center on a fourth down go for it. Tuberville and Mazzoni, his offensive coordinator, will chat about it. Matt Luke is going to try to make it, though he is severely hobbled. They have moved Boyd Kinchin, the starting right guard, the senior, the center, and Hedrick Vincent was coming in to play right guard. And uh, Donardo, the old offensive lineman from Notre Dame, Matching wits against uh, Tommy Tuberville, who may be lacking numbers and playing a, a center like Luke, who's so important to his team, uh, on a leg and a half tells you. Well, you don't want to, you don't want that quarterback snap to go well. But I look at McAllister again. He's got it. Well, that's amazing how he takes the ball, puts it out there, but yet has the strength to bring it back in. Uh, you'd think that. Uh, when he's working on in the weight room, those curls come in handy, don't they? Yes, Boy, good surge there Great off the line. The Big guys, Todd Wade gets a good block up front. And he does. He just kind of just leans out with that football. He put that ball in Joe Wesley's face mask. <laughs> and then <laughs> brought it back. Exactly. First and, First and ten. And the Rebels are three for three on fourth down. I think Tuberville prefers fourth downs rather than yeah. thirds. <laughs> They've got a heck of a completion percentage on, third, on fourth down. Yeah, if we were in Canada, he could be unbeaten. <laughs> Never have to get the third down, so don't worry. Over the middle. Crossing pattern to run. Finally run out by Chris Beard. Well, two big things on that play. You see Patrick as he runs up there, but he sat back in that pocket and had time to pass. And this is the way that you break down the defense of LSU's on crossing patterns. You see Roan's going to come from the right of your screen, cut across. Darius Bank comes right out of there. You see number five, boom, crossing pattern. He's running one-on-one. -on -one. They know they've got that situation. It's one of the matchups that they wanted, and Patrick has been able to take advantage of it. Uh, Noel Mazzoni, understanding that LSU's... Uh, Linebacking core is uh, depleted. Mark Roman, the spy, not playing, injured early, and that hurts them in a very big way in that secondary. Good pitch to Avery into the boundary. Well, nice work by him just to pick up an extra yard once Mixon had wrapped him up. And John Avery showing you some of the strength, even if he is only 5'10, 190 pounds. I was looking to see. I think that might have been Mike Sutton, the defensive end, who got cut and popped back up and still got into the play. And boy, there's no sin in being cut down on the line for a lineman. There's no sin in being knocked down. There's a sin if you stay down there. Sutton, he passes with flying colors. Gets up, makes the tackle. Second down and nine. Again, this is a favorite location for Grant Hurd on that play. He gave up the sack when he looked for it last time. in his grasp intended for Corey Peterson boy and I saw Rufus French come off the line he was trying to go deep now watch the crossing pattern here there's French going to go deep he's one on one off there I don't know if I don't go to him look at the difference in the size but look how close that pick was you're right they know that they're going to do that crossing pattern with Peterson and the backer just sat there just kind of planted sat down squatted and bang came up Good support from Joe Wesley right. third down and nine the bottom of the screen. It will be the fade, but Farone running a post corner 
He's got it to the five-yard line. Boy, and this may be the best pass that Patrick has thrown all day. He had to throw it early. He was under tremendous pressure. Look at the pressure coming up the line on him. And Rowe getting out into the flat. Yeah, that's mixing coming up in there. But look at the good concentration by Rome downfield. Boy, that's what you needed. There was a timing pattern. He actually had to throw the ball, Tim, before he made the break. Third catch for Rome for 89 yards, and it's first down goal for Ole Miss. Avery. Avery, touchdown, Rebels. Well, that guy's on a pogo stick. You talk about a walk in a pipe room. He looked like he was bouncing around out there. What a balancing act as he goes in. You'll see he gets hit on about the five-yard line. He's kind of dives on one foot and goes in. That is a super drive. Well, and that play was well defense by LSU. Well, they got a shot at him about four yards in the backfield. Just can't bring him down. Ooh, that what a bad kick. All right. Elton just plant foot slip. And he missed the extra point. So you have to wonder now, does that take a little air out of the bubble? Guys just run off the field, don't come back with your shoulders and your heads down. Not after a run like this. Avery answers Kevin Falk with a quick six. SEC football is brought to you in part by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Our nationwide insurance scholar athlete of the week is offensive tackle Boyd Kitchen from the University of Mississippi. The graduate student from New Orleans has a 3.5 GPA in accountancy. Congratulations to Boyd Kitchen, our nationwide insurance scholar athlete of the week. Our score 21 to 20, and uh, you know every kicker's nightmare is to have his plant foot slip, yeah. and that's what happened to Steve Lindsay. Exactly right. Watch the watch the left foot come down. You're going to see it slip a little bit right there, and it just throws it off. No one touched it. You see it go outside the bar, just a hook. Not a hook. Kind of like one of your nine iron shots when you were playing this summer. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Rondell Miller. Up to about the 31-yard line, a 21-yard return for Rondell. And uh, Herb Tyler's team up by one, but after the, the drive of the Ole Miss offense, you got to believe that the, the defense of Tommy Tuberville has to be feeling better about itself. Yeah, they really do. They, they, they've got to have a big series here. They want to get the football back. If you're Herb Tyler and company, you're saying, we want to drive the football. We want to control the football. But Ole Miss has played flawless football. Yeah, and they've said, much as they said against Tennessee a couple of weeks ago, we're not an easy out. Exactly we're, right. We're here for the duration. That's right. We're not a bye week. for Larry Foster. Boy, did Tyler get stuck. Wow. Tyler's on that roll coming out of the pocket on that roll looking downfield. And I mean, at the tail end of this play, somebody just beated him. I mean, right there, he goes, bam! You see it right there? I think it was Nate Wayne. It was. It was Nate Wayne, the uh, middle linebacker. He just beated him. Second and ten. the leading tackler came to Ole Miss as a quarterback and he certainly read the eyes of that quarterback Herb Tyler that time yeah this is the this is an old throwback screen what you do all the action goes to the right and you look back across the field and they're set up a screen play but Kreitz doesn't fall for it he knows that he's got Falk all the way he's the only person out there oh you're playing for Tuberville you know you're going to see some of those plays in practice from your offense exactly out of the shotgun. Adrenaline is back in the Ole Miss D, and they're here for more than the, the duration. Well, you, Tyler never sees from the backside. Look at that. He's carrying the ball like a local bridge. you got to put it away. Harrison in there. 
there, swatted that football down. Good penetration. Look at Tyler. You see Spearman number four come in there. And they just whip the football out. And then maybe in Harrison who recovers the football. I mean, excuse me, who causes the fumble in that play. Spearman came away with it. Oh, boy, what a big turn of events for Ole Miss. Now they have to capitalize. Out of the shotgun, Patrick. There's the fade. There's Hurd. He dropped it. Oh, he dropped it. Oh, he, bobbled. Well, he bobbled it out of bounds. It would have been a touchdown. I if he's not, not bobbling it, yeah. it's a touchdown. Well, I think he may have been so conscious that the sideline was coming into play that it just, it was almost too easy. Look at this. See, he's thinking about the sideline. Just catch the football. Yep, if he catches it, it's six. Or he, he had one foot in without a problem. Or remember that play. Yep. Look at Patridge. He's that's got it. Oh, no. I talked to Stuart Patridge about that very play yesterday, and the walkthrough. He says, you know, it's been there. We know we can go to it. And never had it been more open than right there. This one by Reed. Well, I am really impressed by Old Miss's offensive line, given time for Patrick to look downfield. He finds Reed on that crossing pattern, just throws it just out of his reach. Again, Reed wide open. John Avery was also wide open, setting up for a possible screen the other way. And, and I've, I've got to believe that John went back to the huddle to remind Stuart Patrick of just how open he was. Well, backs will do that. They'll say, hey, run the same play on wide open. Watch Rufus French on this play, too. He's the big target in the middle. But first, they have to call timeout. Yeah, some confusion. Andre Roan did not know where to line up. Rebels trying to cash in, trailing by one. It doesn't come easily in the SEC. Tuberville knows it. Back after a word from your local SEC station. Do they go back to him? Do they go to Hurd on that fade route? Do they maybe pick up French? They have many, many options, and they were all open. LSU's defense has been on its heels. Patrick had to endure a drop by Hurd, and then he locked in on one receiver with Avery wide open. This time it's Hurd. And that will be a first down at the eight-yard line of LSU. So they go back to it. Yeah, exactly, and that's what you do with great wide receivers. I wouldn't yeah, doubt that Hurd went back in that pocket and said, hey, I'm sorry, I dropped one. I should have had it. Come back to me. Wiley getting pressure on him, but Patrick does not fade under the pressure, and he looks at Hurd on that crossing pattern, and they have eaten him alive all day with that crossing pattern. You know, his size really helps him at this position on the field. He's not terribly quick, but his size at 6'3 and nearly 200 pounds against a smaller corner, I wouldn't be surprised if they went back to the fade. First and goal. Incomplete and free that one away in the direction of Eli Andy. And uh, Avery, oh. the lonesome running back on the left side of the field. Did you see how wide open Avery is, number 20? Look at him. He's coming out here. Look, there's nobody. I mean, we're not even talking within five yards. Look how wide open he is. He's saying, hey, wait a minute. Look over here just for a second. That's, a, that's an easy call when you're looking at it. Here come the bandits. And an uh, obvious passing down. The extra lineman and linebackers, they fly to the football. Back to it. Alexander. Touchdown. Alisma Alexander. And the Rebels take the lead. No doubt about that after the miss. First catch of the year for Alicia Alexander, and it's for a touchdown. Uh, Nassau Community College signed originally with Ole Miss and then went to Junior College route. Rufus Sprints in motion. Patrick's looking for him. Could have been picked, and it could have been 100 yards for Troy Twillard. That would have been a 100-yard two-point play. But Tommy Tumberville always being positive. And look at Jerry DiNardo. He's got worried. 
What they were going to try to do is they are going to try to run inside. You see French going to the outside. Good read there. Just a great read by Troy Twilley. And you know, the only guy that had a chance of getting Twilley after he made the interception, which, by the way, would have counted two for LSU, was Stuart Patrick. Exactly. 26-21. And the Ole Miss Rebels have answered the Tigers' comeback after getting an early cushion in this game. Well, this is the touchdown. Watch Alexander, 17. Watch this catch. One hand. Look at that. Way out. Just kind of pulls it in like he took a lesson from Rufus French on that one-handed catch. How much does it help to have a guy like French 10 yards further back? Stuart Patrick has been looking to even that touchdown to interception ratio. Took a large step toward that goal with that play. Well, that was just, you know, one of the things that Tommy Coverville and Noel told us both is that Patrick plays within himself. He doesn't try to, he doesn't force the ball, he doesn't make mistakes. He is, he's, he's not talented like a, a Peyton Manning or someone like that, but he plays fantastic football because he plays at the top of his game. Falk back deep along with Rondell Neely. Lindsay to kick it away. Still got 640 to play in the third. It is a boots kick. Fair catch called for by Banks. The starting fullback. And LSU has it at the 28-yard line. Here's how we got to this point. A very active first quarter, obviously, with Avery, Tyler answering, and then McAllister, the two-yard touchdown run. And since that time, Falk taking over in the second quarter on his way to a 108-yard first half. But it has been Ole Miss in the second half. Avery's touchdown vault. And then Alexander's first catch of the season for a touchdown. There's the first passing touchdown of the game for either team. Falk, met at the line and bounces off. Every coach will tell you the greatness of a back is measured on what he gains after contact. Yep. Yards after contact. Once you get hit, do you keep those feet going or do they just die on you? And when you're Kevin Falk, you just explode. You get hit, you get those feet down just as fast as you can, and you pick up five, six yards after you're stuffed in the backfield. You know, missed extra points. You know, it's probably one of the most automatic things in football is that extra point. But boy, does it play a big part in the game when you miss one. Second and four. Hawk. Good work this time by Ole Miss defensively. They got him around the legs very quickly. Andre Harrison at the bottom of that pile. Well, you know, I know Jerry DiNardo. I can just imagine the thoughts going through his brain. He knew. He said, we just want to get rid of that rear view mirror so we're not always looking back. He said, we want to be able to look ahead. We want to be able to play. Get that emotion out of us and go on. The elite programs that are accustomed to being in the top ten, they get that done. Tremendous individual effort by Herb Tyler, whose decision making has really improved in recent weeks. Bradley Robinson made the stop. And look at the, you can see the emotion on Tommy Coverville, because this is supposed to be a sack. Watch this, one hand in front of him. Now look at this move right there, come back inside. Again, gets swatted at and it just finds that first down yardage. That's individual effort. No time to find Tyrone Frazier because he was running for his life back there. Robert Tyler is in the game at fullback, number 44. In the way for Falk. And he just will not stop oh. turning. He picks up maybe six yards on that play. Down to Bob Kessler. Tim, a lot of folks around the country might be surprised with this score, but fans that follow the SEC won't be. They will know that Ole Miss led Auburn in the third quarter and play Tennessee to a 7-3 game at halftime. The key for Ole Miss, do they believe they can win this game, and do they have enough strength to match uh, the LSU Tigers and indeed pull off this upset? Second down and three. Well, that was a tough chance just to get it to him. And a big hole for Kevin Falk for the first down. And Tim, let me tell you, this is just big man on big man. There's no fool, and everybody just straight driving off. Good block right there in the up back. 
That's Robert Tyler, the big fullback coming in there blocking. And this is there, you know, it's almost as if you're gonna take a stand. And that's what you like to do, just get right on right behind big Alan Fanica. Look at what they've yeah. done behind him and then away from him. Not nearly as effective. down as Falk hits the deck at the 43-yard line. That may be holding against LSU. If it is, it's going to negate a good drive because it's going to take him back. Morris Scott and Nate Wayne collaborate. Holding on the offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat it down. I wanted to go back to what Bob Kessling said about that Tennessee game. We should mention that on the opening kick of the second half, Ole Miss fumbled. Tennessee got a gift touchdown. Then Manning had a nice quick touchdown toss to make it 21-3 very quickly in that yeah. game. Ole Miss not only got back in the game, but they had an opportunity to tie it if their defense could have come up with one stop in that last exactly. series that led to a touchdown for Tennessee. Philip Fulmer said afterwards, I'm so happy that in that east-west changeover, we don't have to play the Rebels next year. Well, Tommy Tuberville said he looks for technique, effort, and execution. That's all he asks out of his players. Rondell Mealy is in the game. Tyler's pass. Caught by Booty. Textbook. Boy, that is. We talk about concentration and good hands. Booty, as he's going out of bounds, looks that ball in, stretches for it. This is going to be just an out pattern. Just run to the side. Now plant. Bang. You get him turned. Now look out right there and look at the concentration. Get that foot down in bounds. Good catch. You got to catch the football. You hear so often about Josh Booty being his brother. At Woodlawn High School in Shreveport, Johnny Booty was one of a number of great quarterbacks in that school's history, including Bradshaw and Ferguson. They thought he got tripped. I thought it was incidental contact. No reason to boo. Now watch right here. He's got him beat, but the pass is long. But you see the foot kind of get clipped right there. That's gripped, and that's, that's got the coverage. Again, maybe we can take a, a different angle of it. See, he just kind of goes down the ball. The ball was far overthrown, too. I don't think that it really would have been no. a catchable football. Malika Griffin. You know, if Lex can get yeah. tied up, he can go for the ball as well, and he did. Exactly. Big play here for Tyler. Third down, eight yards, needs that first down. Out of the shotgun. Down he goes again. Walker Jones, 29. And a little help from his friends Johnny Jones, number 92. And Tim, we're talking about a team that only had six sacks coming into this game. They only had six, and they've already got three today. That's their fourth of the day. Whoops, I made a mistake on that, excuse me. But that's incredible. They haven't been able to get pressure on the quarterback. Now, this is the boots punter, Jeremy Whitten, starting left fielder on the football team. It just goes into the end zone. That's like I said, football team. I mean baseball team. <laughs> but uh, they use him when they're trying to get for that ball in the corner. Don't forget next week, Tim Couch. Perhaps the heir apparent to Peyton Manning? Well, you may see him or Alabama and Ole Miss, our Bell South SEC Game of the Week. Stuart Patridge brings his troops out with a five-point lead with 2.53 to play in the third. Well, for Tommy Tuberville, you're thinking, don't make a mistake. Don't force the ball. Don't fumble the ball. Keep playing outstanding football. If you're LSU, you're thinking it's time to buckle up and come after them. Nice swirl by Pineda Lucas. How did he stay up? That was kind of like a three-legged run there at the tail end. But Lucas, boy, did Patrick get hit on the tail end. Watch Patrick in here. He's back in the shotgun, stands up. He knows LSU is coming. That's Wiley. Wiley just levels him. Bam, down he goes. But watch Lucas on this right here. Get that hand up. If he could have come back up on his feet, ooh, that might have been a foot race. Second down, less than a yard. In the traffic that time, double coverage for LSU against Rufus French. 
and it's knocked away. Right down to Bob Kessler. Tim, what the Ole Miss coaches are now talking to the defensive unit and the other boys on the bench is we've got them pretty much where we wanted to have it, a chance to win this game going to the fourth quarter, take it one play at a time. And all the coaches are harping to the defensive players right now. One play at a time. Don't worry about what happened in the first quarter, what you did last play. Worry about the next play and do your job and do it right. Avery in out of the eye formation. We'll talk about third and one. Look at the quick feed. Extra special back. Wow. Make a play when you need it. And that's the first down, Ole Miss. Up at the 37-yard line. Tim, this is a one-hole play. It's designed to go up the middle. Very few backs can make a cut like this. This is going right over the center. Look at that feet. Outside, avoids the tackle there. Now, he knows what he's got to get. You've got to get to the outside. He gets that first down yardage. You're right. That's a special back with great feet. Because the hole wasn't in the middle where it was supposed to be. He made one. Lucas is in the game along with Sheldon Morris, a wide receiver. Four of them out of the shotgun. as if you're taking your tight end and turning him into an extra back. It's almost like a running yeah. play. Uh, with your fullback loading him up against a strong safety and a nickel defensive back. Yeah, a lot of coaches will call that an extended handoff because it's, it's almost like a handoff. You're just dropping it to him right on the line of scrimmage. But French is such a big target. I just, again, I just think he's he has got to prove to me that he's going to drop the football before I'd stop going well, to him. In the land of hot boudin and cold couscous, a lot of French dressing for the opposition today. Avery. Again, just that extra jitterbug will net him a couple of, of yards that most running backs simply would not make. Well, Joe Wesley had him for about a two-yard loss. He was out on the flank. He had him, and all of a sudden, he just, as you said, just did that jitterbug and picked up about three, four yards. I mentioned that because I know that that was uh, the dance of your day. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks there, buddy. What was yours, the Charleston? <laughs> Third down and three. And the crowd rises to its feet. You know what I do? I'm going to the big man, French. Let him come off that line be a big target. should have been a flag. Oh, I think there should have been one, too. I think he got tackled. Joe Wesley hammered him, and uh, Tommy Tuberville can't believe it. Oh, I, I was surprised, too. Watch, he's going to cross from right to left on your pattern. Jim, he's a delay off the line. Now, right here. Look at him right there. Does he get hit right there? Oh, that's interference. Oh, yeah, he's hooked. That he's was, hooked. Yeah. I think that's Joe Wesley who hooked him. That was a good play by, by Wesley, if you can get away with it. Yeah. Oh. And he did. Yes, he did. But he got hooked. Well, they, they have a fourth down again, and uh, poor Jerry DiNardo, uh, who do I put in on fourth down? Yeah. You know, having to deal with that in virtually every series. Well, I think I think you just got to punt this away. I'm sorry. Now, I don't like the second-guess coaches. I know they're three for three on fourth down conversions, but right now they're for three for three, but they've got a five-point lead. Maybe they call a timeout and talk about Delay. it. Delay. Offense. Well, now you punt. Yeah. Well, you just... And you just reduced your, your percentage of making the first down by about 40 percentage points. Well, that's such a critical first down. Five yards is really not going to hurt you. And you also take some time off the clock. Falk is back deep. Boy, is he dangerous. Well, that's one of the reasons why you go for it on four. It's a quick hit. Cooper gets it out. Falk is ready for it. He's got a lot of room. Morris does a nice job, the gunner they call him on special teams, number 86. If he doesn't make that play, now Falk has 30 yards with not a rebel within sight in well, front of him. He does, he caught it on the run. And Morris is the most valuable player on special teams week after week. And look at the field that he had. If he gets by Morris. Illegal substitution on the defense. Oh, wait a minute. They had an illegal substitution on that quick kick. Now, it was fourth down and what? Well, remember, it was a quick kick. It was yeah. fourth and eight. All right, fourth After and eight. After the five-yard penalty. Okay, so that won't give him a first down. Oh, but it makes it fourth and three. 
So again, you've taken your percentage. Oh, now you want to go back for you've it. You've taken your percentage <laughs> of 40, but you got your 40 percentage points back. All right. Well, I know, and they're three for three on that fourth down. Substitution fraction on the defense to be penalized for previous spot, five yards, fourth down. And now, uh, I think you seriously Cardo. consider going for it again. Now, wait a minute. Well, I think you may. <laughs> you got to remember who's coaching this game. All right. You. No, no, no. Tommy Tuberville yeah, is not your That's conventional right. decision maker here. You're right. He's the, he's the gambler. Look at him right now. You can just read his mind. He's saying, you think we can make this? Now, a couple of... Uh, SEC road wins. Do you remember that Georgia game we had last oh, year? Yeah. Now, that was not a conventional oh, no. win. I mean, he did a lot of different things. What? Oh, remember oh, now, oh. remember <laughs> now, they do have a fake punt That's in their right. They sure do. They have a fake punt. Pretty good punt, and it forces a fair catch. So they pick up some extra yardage <laughs> off of that uh, penalty against LSU. And the Tigers will have it first and 10 at their own 15-yard line. A good argument between us, but but you know that penalty really came into play because they picked up about 20 yards on that penalty because of where the kick would have been and because of where the kick is now. So that was a good decision. Well, the other thing, too, Tuberville, Tuberville's coaching style, you know, you go to a quick kick, you can't get your defender out there in time, so now you've got an illegal substitution. I mean, he helped force exactly. that penalty. Well, you remember what Tommy Tuberville said? We need to take the crowd out of the game. First and ten. Fought. Tripped up. That should be the final play of the quarter. Timmy, is the, have you ever heard it this quiet here? I've been here many times for many years, and uh, everyone told me, though I was not in this uh, this building a week ago, it was louder than it had ever been. The loudest I'd ever witnessed it as a young broadcaster here was in 1979 when number one USC came in, and LSU played them off their feet before losing 17-12. to 12. It's, uh, it's a bit more quiet this week. And the fans get back into it. And the Tigers put one back to back. We'll soon find out. Quieter place. A week after the Florida game against the Ole Miss Rebels. Remember a rivalry game like this one, you never know. And Tommy Tupperville has his team right where he wants. Oh, he does. He wanted to be in this game in the fourth quarter. He is. Now he's got to just play perfect football. But you know, you have to realize there's one Kevin Falk run away yeah, or an option, or a higher power option down the field. So uh, they've got to play perfect football to stay in this. Those have been really the two go to plays uh, either Falk behind Fanica or the option series, which Herb Tyler runs so well. And uh, really, Ole Miss defensively has only been, oh, say, 50 50 in defending it. Yeah, and one thing you want to do if you're Ole Miss is you want to make. LSU, you don't want to get in good field position. You want to make them drive the length of the field. They're a very capable football team of putting eight, ten plays together and driving the length of the field. This time it's Falk running behind Fanica. Boy, well, he got a great uh, block by the official that time. <laughs> the official down in the pile. Let's take a look at our stats through three. LSU's passing yardage down significantly, though Booty did make one critical catch in this half. The total yards with the Rebels, they're doing it both in, in the air and on the ground. Yes, they are. 16 first downs. They're playing ball control. They're playing smart football. They haven't made a big mistake yet. I'll just do it myself if I have to. This was designed all the way. This is going to be quarterback draw all the way. Drop back now. Look for the hole that he has to run through. But again, look at that. Broke a tackle there. Broke another one there. Kept his balance. Just picked up a lot of yards on his own. That is just amazing. Hurt Tyler's one of those players that just seems to rise when he's needed. who had the miscue on that 72-yard jaunt in the first quarter of this game between he and uh, 
And obviously, Timothy Strickland, they've uh, they've got a lesson in how to defend the option today. Well, they played it well here. Make the quarterback pitch. Now, come up and make the big tackle. Don't let him stiff arm you. Anytime somebody stiff arms you, what you do is you grab and you hold on to his arm. If he's putting his arm out there, you grab it and you ride him down. Look at that. 167 yards for Fought. But let's say this about Avery. He's been used as a receiver far more often than Fought. Well, you see the results, too. Each of them have two touchdowns. Fought. Gets a couple of yards, if that. Ronnie Hurd, the strong safety. Seven tackles for him this afternoon. You know, in talking with Morris Watts, our offensive coordinator at LSU, he said, you know, one of the reasons why you have to keep the option in your package is just to make the opposition work on it during the week because so few teams really use it in critical situations in this day and time. Exactly. That, that forces you to take some of your practice time and work against it. Well, there have been big uh, big downs in this game. This is a big down for LSU. They do not want to give this football back to Ole Miss. Three wide receiver set. Here comes the blitz from Price. Tyler resourceful against it. Finds an open receiver. Larry Foster, what a marvelous move by Tyler. Reading the blitz from Price and then breaking contain. Now watch what Price does on the blitz. He goes inside. Right there, he goes inside and gets blocked. That allows Tyler to come to the outside. Look at him directing his wide receiver. Good block there, Falk. Just coming up, just keeping it inside. And look at him, just directing downfield, looking downfield, finding his wide receiver. DiMaggio and Hankton, the two tight ends, are in the ballgame for LSU. Fake the option. They look deep for Foster. Malika Griffin has been picked on by virtually every quarterback and every offensive coordinator in this league. Though he had a step that Foster, Griffin with a nice recovery. Well, if I was if I was Malika Griffin, I'd say I'd rather be lucky than good because this is just a drop. Foster's got this. You see the fake action now. Look downfield. You got him one on one. Look at the separation he has. This is nothing that Griffin does. Foster just drops the football. I'd rather be lucky mm, than good. You're right. The only thing he could do was reach and try to grab those arms after the catch was made. I know that time Foster just let it get away. Falk. Boy, what a move by Falk that time. He was going nowhere, and he zigzags inside and picks up about four yards on the play. Timothy Strickland, the sophomore from Hamilton High School in Memphis, Tennessee, playing free safety. Making the tackle. And I see Morris Scott getting up real slow. I think he got hurt on the play. He's the defensive end on that side. You see him going to the sideline. Nate Wayne coming in. Now they bring their rush team in. What you do is you bring in, you have three down linemen, you go to four backers, and you did your nickel defense. You try to get up there, get some pressure on them with the three linemen, maybe blitz, but you got to come to the pass. Third and seven. shy of the first down at the 35-yard line. They'll be two yards shy. What a hit by Kreitz on that play. And you're hearing the fans say, go, go, go. Kreitz comes all the way across the field. He's a former quarterback. He knows what it's like. Watch him when he zeroes in on Tyler here. Right here. Gets him everything. Boom! Just get him out of bounds. It's actually fourth down and a long two, almost three. And so this is no chippy. But uh, to borrow a page from Tommy Tuberville, Jerry DiNardo, five down, wants this series to work. Uh, I have to put it in the hands of somebody. I have to put it in the hands of Tyler. Or fought. And they read the option. Ole Miss read the option to the wide side very well. Mitch Baker makes the play. Well, you know what Baker did? Baker blasted through there and got great penetration. He knocked the guard back into the quarterback. Watch right there. Look. What a play. That's the biggest play by the former volunteer, Mitch Baker. That, and that, that's such a great read. You know, and you've been a down lineman. Yeah. You can read those plays from, from that location. Absolutely. That was just a great play. First and 10 is Andrew. DP 
picks up three up to the 40-yard line. And so the, the clock on the wall favors Ole Miss because uh, now, with just over 11 minutes to play, uh, Tommy Tuberville hopes that his team can maintain possession and just a field goal would give them, if all they got on you know, this drive would be three, it would give them a touchdown and a two-point conversion for LSU just to tie. Boy, mixed extra, mixed extra points really room big. Auto Parts presents the SEC Good Works Team, recognizing the superior community service efforts of league football players. Today's honoree is fullback Marquise Spears from Louisiana State University. Marquise speaks on a regular basis to area high school students to address staying in school and avoiding drug use. He also visits Angola State Penitentiary to speak to prisoners. Advance Auto Parts is proud to salute Marquise Spears and will contribute $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation on behalf of the SEC Good Works Team. right here right there is the faint pump that's what Cummings came up on and what happened is heard watch right here he's just kind of off the ground now there see Cummings coming up he lost him right there the safety can't get over and pick it up and Hurd is down the sideline nobody's going to catch him from behind Red Hurd you know he made a big catch in the Auburn game and was caught from behind not this time well his first touchdown of the year is his biggest touchdown of the year Wind blowing down the football off the tee, so Lindsey will do it again. Stuart Patridge having a career afternoon. And uh, Cummings and company going over the adjustments that are warranted after that last drive. Falk back deep along with Neely. You overturn it with the wind behind it. LSU will start from its own 20-yard line with a lot of ground to make up. And just over 10 minutes to play. 10-23 remaining. And the Rebels with a 12-point lead. We touched on it earlier. We mentioned the history with regard to coming off big wins on the Bayou, beating a team that you're favored against. In 59, Ole Miss, they beat them with the Halloween jaunt by Billy Cannon. They lost to Tennessee in 82, a decade ago. They beat Florida State to go to the Orange Bowl, lost to two Timothy Strickland. And this is a shock. Tiger Stadium crowd is better than 80,000. They can't believe they're witnessing this yet again. I can't believe the pressure that Herb Tyler is under. He's got to get out of the pack. Look at the tire pressure from the backside there in his face. He doesn't see this. Just watching the quarterback's eyes, he just zeroes in on. Look, he's coming from a strong safety spot. Trick Lance has entered first interception. He blocked the kick. He's got five tackles. He's been Superman back there today. Patrick. Has Twilly made a near touchdown saving tackle. You know, I think that may have been the play. I was just going to say the same thing. Unbelievable. 
Unbelievable. Now, that, I think what they did on that play is I think that they came and they said, hey, wait a minute. All of a sudden, we've seen Avery come out of the backfield. We see they has been wide open, and they just made him wide open. They finally went back to him. But look at career passing yardage, career high for Stuart Patrick. Back inside the 35 to the 34 yard line. Boy, you think Jerry Gennardo doesn't have some concern? Well, we, we mentioned that the, the defense really she needed to make a big play in Rose Rewind to put it away. Now they need a big play just to get back into it. Well, it's huge. I mean, it, it, it's, just, it's a huge turn of events. But I'm really surprised. I mean, we're talking about a defense for Ole Miss that came in with six sacks and four interceptions halfway through the season. French has it at the 28-yard line. Three yards shy of the first down. Penn State, a team that traditionally gets it done against teams they're favored against after a big win. Joe Paterno's team down today, but they survived Minnesota. Yeah, they, they, they were down. They had that big win against Ohio State last week. Big down here for Ole Miss. Third down three. Don't make a mistake. Keep the ball. You're in field goal position. And they have the win that they're back. That hasn't stopped Tuckerville in the past. No, I think your field goal. I think you've got to be thinking field goal in this situation. Now you finally have the win that you're back. Now, well, this is that little slip. Back to the flat, try to run them deep. Little flip out to the pass. Now, try to get that first down yardage. He tries to make a good cut. Back inside. Reed does not pick up the first down yardage. He's going to bring up a fourth down. Now the decision is, do you, let, do you want to run as much time as you can off the clock? Look at the smile on Tommy Tuckerville's face. He's going for it. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. He's going for it. You're right. Oh, is he the Mississippi Gambler? Hasn't stopped him before. Well, he's had a lot of luck on it. He's been three and three. Play fake. He's going for a knockout punch. What a great play. That's Andy. He used that play on fourth down at the goal line against Georgia last year. Exactly. Same play, safe play, but let me tell you what it does. It keeps the clock going. He cannot give up the football because he knows how quickly LSU can score. And look at this. Run Reed out of the back, or Andy out of the backfield. Find him. Patrick will never have a bigger day than he's having right now. He's now used on that catch by Eli Andy, 10 different receivers in what is a career-high 346-yard performance, 27 of 40 for Patrick. And the Tigers' defense on its heels. Boy, I tell you, there are several things that happened on this play. First of all, Avery saw the pressure at the point of attack and made a tremendous cut. Andy gets a good block back there. Everybody just cut off the football just as hard as they can. You can see what, what John Avery does with the football. He does not give it up. He's got it tucked in there tight. First down and goal at the 10. three-yard line, and uh, Troy Twilly yeah. took him out. I don't see a marker. Now yes. I do see yeah. one. Yes, I do. Yeah, there's one throw way out of bounds. Dead ball. He's out of bounds. Personal foul. Defense. Throw him to the ground out of bounds. Half a distance. First down. Now, do you give it to Al to Gallister? Do you let him penetrate? Watch the tail end of this right here. He's got all the yardage he can get right here. And he just throws him on down. Yeah. If he doesn't, yeah. he'll just let it let him go. He knew where he was. Well, I think that's a frustration play. Yeah, yeah indeed. They're on their heels. And some of the fans are hitting the gates on this drive. But well, what's unbelievable is LSU has not scored the second half. We only got six and a half minutes left. Flag down. So they stopped the play. And McAllister was getting the call. 
Well, I think you go to the, the you know the old saying, you go to the dance that you, that the girl that you prom. Ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, yeah. still first down. Now, a, a break for LSU. Yeah. They, they've got to be thinking, at least hold them to three, because your only chance is to score twice, and you're going to have to get a couple of two-point conversions if you're going to have a chance at, at even sending this game to overtime. And, uh, and the fans that uh, thought they were ready and the hangover was early, uh, it may have been coming to reality here in the fourth quarter. Uh, I just think you go right at them. you got four downs. The worst you want to get out of this is a field goal. Use all the clock you can. Fade pattern, that's heard. Ooh, that stops the clock. Incomplete, and then stops the clock with 634 to play. Now this is a series for LSU that if they, they hold them to three, they are still very much in this game. Yeah, but uh, but the clock stops. On that pass, when you don't complete that pass, the clock stops. You can take 30 seconds off per play. And for Tommy Tuberville, he's got to be thinking, and Noel Mazzoni, they've got to be thinking clock. You've got to keep that clock ticking down. For LSU, it's get the ball back as fast as you can. Remember, the Tigers have a full complement of timeouts. They're going to need them. be an incomplete pass it was mixing again that hammered him tough to get up after that one and patrick just keeps on getting up there's miller but i don't think miller's going to get a snap today because patrick is just in his own watch him just get crushed on the tail end of that play again lsu sell out blitz they're coming after him trying to make a problem trying to to force the turnover and again the clock stops now they've only run Seven seconds, eight seconds off in the last two plays. Tenth play of the drive. Third down and goal just outside the six-yard line. Uh -huh. Incomplete. Cedric Donaldson was right there with him, and that'll bring up the field goal situation. Tim, uh, I, I hit the key by the sound repetitious, but again, another five to six seconds off the clock. Do you run the football? Now, the results are you stopped the clock three times in a row. You could have taken almost a minute, over a minute off. I know you got Lindsey coming in. He's good. He's solid from this distance. He certainly should have no problem. But I just think you kind of want to keep that clock cranking up. So be a 24-yard try. The lead is extended to 15 points. 36 to 21. So it is a two-touchdown, two-point conversion game. That's what LSU has in front of them if they're to get it done in back-to-back -back weeks. SEC football is brought to you in part by Shoney's. Steve Lindsay prepares to kick off along with Bob Kessling on the sidelines. Dave Rowe in the booth. Tim Brando, happy to have you with us. Kevin Falk, a huge afternoon for him, but he's going to need to uh, perhaps have a 300-yard day if LSU is needs to come from behind to get this one. Jimmy's in one of the most dangerous positions that he can be in, and that's returning kicks. Remember what he did last year? He led the SEC. Well, with that strong win, you're not going to have an opportunity. You know, it's interesting. Rondell Neely back there with him. We touched on what a quality back he is, but he's been a non-factor this afternoon, and, and you begin to wonder just how fresh will Falk be. I know he's your, as uh, Keith Jackson would say, bell cow player, but Rondell Mealy figured to be uh, a player of much greater impact today than he exactly. has been to this point. First and 10 Tigers at their 20. Did the offense initiate? In other words, did he flinch and draw the defense offsides, or did he react to the defensive player coming into the neutral zone? Dead ball, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Look on the left of your screen. See the flinch right there? That's what pulled him off. Good call. And boy, hasn't Mitch Baker played well today? He's been all over the field. Now that's a, a tremendous young coach, 22-7-1. In his third year at LSU, coming into today's game, but uh, he could see this coming. 
Unfortunately, he couldn't convince his players. That pass is caught. That's Tyrone Frazier to the 35-yard line. But you know, that's the toughest job in coaching, Dave. You can say it, say it all week. Oh, yeah. But when you're working with 18 to 22-year-old kids, you always wonder, did they hear me? Oh, I promise you, he wondered that all week. But now it's Tyler time. He's got to find his wideouts. This is not going to be a running game now with under six minutes left. Tyler's got to go to his wideouts. to the 42-yard line. Three or four yards shy of a first down. And boy, does Tyler feel the pressure. When he's back in the pocket, he knows what his time is. He's getting pressure in the pocket from the top side. He steps up now. Look, he's even directing him downfield right there. He just has a great sense of where he is at all times. Second and three. First down. And then some. Shy of midfield. Now, if you're old miss, though, you don't mind that. Let the quarterback run the football. Let him pick up four or five yards because the clock ticks off. Once they get the chain set, the clock ticks off. If you're LSU, you've got to look at those wideouts. You've got to think going deep. You've got to get time to sit back there and pass. Old miss, they got to get pressure. Frazier and Foster, they're the two with speed. They're up at the top of your screen. Booty at the bottom of your screen. Balancing act by Foster to the 40-yard line. Malika Griffin brings him down. And for those fans that may have left prematurely, they may be coming back. Yep. There Under is. five minutes remaining, and the Tigers need, as I mentioned, two touchdowns and at least one two-point conversion. Well, it's been a long time since LSU has been in Old Miss's territory. They have not scored in this second half yet. Get out of bounds, so the clock continues to wind down. Yeah, you know, I told you I don't want to second guess coaches, but that back in that series, realized that Ole Miss could have taken a minute and a half off the ball, at least a minute off the ball, by running. They take about probably about 15 seconds off. I don't know if that decision will come back and kind of be a factor in it, but LSU is moving the football. This time, Tyler has to duck under some heavy pressure. All right, he doesn't pick up the first down. The clock runs. They've got to get. They've got to be on the line or call a timeout. Quincy Washington forced Tyler to the turf, and the first of three timeouts that Arnold can call upon utilized. It will take two touchdowns, two two-point conversions, if LSU is to remain number eight or better in the country this week. Third down and three coming up for LSU. 4:09 remaining, trailing by 15 to the Ole Miss Rebels, trying to do to the Tigers what LSU did to number one a week ago. Now, first of all, two situations for Ole, for Ole LSU. They have got two downs to make this yardage. Do they pass it? I think they do on this situation. And they come back. Tyler Texas. it. That's a great decision to the 16-yard line. The clock moves. Two timeouts remaining, but it does stop so the chains can reset with four minutes to play. Well, this was not designed to be a run, but Tyler just kind of ad-libs on his own and rushes up there for the first down. This is definitely, as you say, four-down territory right here. They stop the clock by moving the chains. Tyler, out route, but right there with Foster, Thigpen, number 30, the junior from Cleveland, Mississippi. Boy, did Thigpen stick him. Yeah, hello, how you doing out here in the flat? He's done a nice job yeah. in man-to-man -man coverage much of this day. They haven't thrown at him that often. Malika Griffin's been getting a workout. Second down and eight. Tyler in trouble and sacked at the 15-yard line. And that'll allow the clock to continue to move. Andre Harrison... Coming up with another sack. That's five on the day. They only had six coming in yeah. to this game. They're going to double their sack output today. Now, again, they have to hurry. You've got to have time left. Third and eight. You want to save those timeouts. Right to Frazier, but shy of the first down. But they kept him in bounds. Didn't allow him to get out of bounds. The clock continues. It ticks down under three minutes. 
Now the timeout coming. It's as big a play as the Tigers will have. Fourth down and three. 250 remaining. Today's Bell South SEC Game of the Week was brought to you by Bell South. Bell South is proud to be the official telecommunications partner of the SEC. By Nations Bank. And by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. Much of this crowd really vacated Tiger Stadium during Ole Miss's last drive that led to a field goal to make it 36-21. Some of them may return if the Tigers can convert on fourth and three. This is your ball game. Tyler Nabooty dropped it in the end zone. He dropped it. He, didn't, he just dropped it, Tim. Let's go. As big as those catches were last week, many of them deep in Tiger territory to keep drives alive. The, the freshman, Abram Booty, their best hands on the field, will never forget this. Look how wide open he was. It wasn't even close. He just dropped it. He made a great move to get open. Faked that corner, came back to the post. He was wide open. Nobody was near him. <laughs> Beyond the 15 to the 18 yard line, and uh, now the few that had remained hit the gates in mass. And the congratulations already coming from the Ole Miss faithful to their, their young team with their biggest win in a very long while. Well, the announcers for today's game selected and compensated by Jefferson Wild Sports. Our broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Now, the college game is one of emotion. Sure it is. And uh, last week, LSU had all of it. Jumped on number one, out of the gates to a 14-0 lead, rode that wave of emotion to a huge upset, first ever upset of a number one team in the 104-year history of the institution. But that's why the college game is different. And Tommy Tuberville looked at the schedule and, and said, you know, I like my chances of pulling an upset, catching this team in this situation. And the rest of the schedule, the Rebels now, are going to move right back into the thick of it. They get Alabama at home next week. Then they get Arkansas, non-conference game with Tulane, Georgia, and Mississippi State, the Egg Bowl, to close it out. And the Western Division is as wide open as it's ever been. It's never been this wide open. McAllister to the 21-yard line. And all you're thinking on Ole Miss is don't fumble the football. First down, gives them four more downs. They get the move to the chains, and it's just a stunned crowd. Look at Jerry DiNardo. And you know what's amazing? It didn't sneak up on him. He knew. He knew it. He told his team. He's been around this business far too long. They have to play at Kentucky, then at Bama. Notre Dame here at home, and then Arkansas to close it out on a Friday. But uh, this is a Tigers team that chances, uh, their chances of getting to Atlanta for the SEC title game, one would think, diminished drastically off this loss. <laughs> Avery. Avery. Now, the reason for that is that obviously they needed Auburn to lose twice. Yeah. Uh, Alabama is a team that they have not been able to solve. The roller coaster ride for. The Tigers program, we touched on it earlier. It happened in the 50s. Happened in the 60s with a team that won the SEC. And because Notre Dame wanted to play in a bowl game, the Cotton Bowl, they were, they were out of the bowls altogether in 69. And then 82, Jerry Stovall's team, oranges were being thrown on the field the following week. Vegas, Vince Gibson, and Tulane. Avery Carey. Tiger Stadium. And uh, you add to that the 70s game when they beat Ole Miss by one. And then that followed that up with a loss. Look at Tuberville. He got dunked. <laughs> he said, go ahead. Woo, is that cold? But I'll take it. Well, not a bigger win for him. 
we're going to have to search the record books to find out how big a win this is for Ole Miss because it's just an incredible victory for them. And I can see the players on the far sideline. They're all just jumping around. They still have a minute and 15 seconds to jump on the far sideline. Why are they excited? Avery cuts back. Now watch the speed. Now Cummings is also very fast. He used a little button hook to get away from him there. A little 360 <laughs> button hook. And, and Cummings is, is the fastest defender LSU has. You know, you, I think you have to go back to 1990 when Ole Miss beat LSU here. They beat them 19 to 10. This is the biggest win since then, and I will argue that it's their biggest win ever. I, I'm going to say because that 1990 LSU team, not at all the same as the 1997 oh, no. team coming off a win against Florida. And the way they beat Florida, they didn't just yeah. win it. They, they physically dominated the Gators exactly. in the second half. They totally the dominated them. They got pressure on the quarterback. They beat Florida in every aspect of the game. And here today, they are going to go down to a young Ole Miss team, and they're dancing on the other side. The Tigers have never lost a game when Kevin Falk had rushed for over 100 yards. They have now. And Tommy Tuberville, the Mississippi Riverboat gambler, who was an assistant at Miami and was on a staff in 87 that beat LSU after the Tigers had secured an SEC championship has gotten his biggest win as a head coach in only his third year. The upstart Rebels win this Southern-made rivalry by a final score of 36 to 21 before a stunned crowd at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge. Back to wrap it up after this for the local SEC station.